Alrighty. <clears throat> hello, hello, hello. Checking out my levels. Looks like everybody should be able to hear me okay. I am still in the process of installing the game. Here's my Steam library, as you can see. We're at about just a hair under 80%. So, But it's Talos Principle 2 launch day. I, you know, I could not possibly be more excited. Anybody who's here is well aware of just how much I love the first game and how excited I was after playing the demo for the second one. So I think this is going to be great. I'm very excited. Just going to fire it up as soon as it's ready. <laughs> Tara, I really appreciate the hype, Jif. How are you? It's good to see you. Hmm. Hi, Lone Wonder. <laughs> yes, hype. I'm glad you're so happy to be here. I am also so happy to be here. I made it. Twelve out of ten happy days. Yeah, I mean, when was it? They it was just May that they even announced the sequel existed, right? So, never in a million years would have bet on a sequel happening before then, and then for it to be announced and then come out so soon and be so promising. And I've looked at a few reviews. I have been careful to avoid spoilers beyond, of course, what was in the demo, which. You know, obviously I know that, but I'm fine with that. But, you know, the reviews are saying it's bigger and better in every way. It's fantastic. People are naming it Game of the Year, even alongside, you know, the Tears of the Kingdoms and RE4 remakes of the world. And uh, I've heard it. I, I've been, I read a couple of reviews that said it's right up there for them in the greatest games of all time after playing it. So I'm, I'm really, really excited. We've got 8% left. <laughs> Hi, Apothem. I am also hyped for this game. Uh, I'm doing well, Lone Wonder. Thanks for asking. I'm, uh, I'm doing pretty well. This last weekend, I was actually in Chicago. That's why there was no stream. I was in Chicago for my 10-year law school class reunion. So that does make me feel a little bit on the old side. <laughs> but it was good. It was, it was nice to catch up with everybody. It was good to see him, and I always enjoy visiting Chicago. So Yeah, Tara, I know. Thanks, thanks for that. <laughs> Creaky old bones. Yeah, when I stand up, both my knees pop. Don't judge me. That's awesome. <laughs> Well, happy Dirty 30, belated. I know I, I think I just got in day of on telling the Discord to wish you happy birthday, but allow me to say, albeit belatedly, happy 30th. Welcome to the next decade. You're in the old decade now. Your bedtime is just going to start creeping earlier and earlier. All right, here we go. 59 achievements. I wonder what they are. We'll find out, won't we? <clears throat> so I kept, uh, I've kept chat up, but I've disabled all the other overlays. Just because, you know, first blind run, brand new game. I want the entire screen to be fully visible. Getting some significant lag in the intro, these little intro cutscenes, which is weird. 
<laughs> okay, here we go. Show subtitles. Speaker. This is an example of subtitles text that should help to tune subtitles visual appearance. Please do show the compass. That's fine. I don't need colorblind mode. Nice of him to ask. Okay. I think we're good. Brightness. Okay. Important for your health and safety. The epilepsy seizure warning. Here we go. Alright, let's do our options. All of them. I'm not gonna read off the options again. We already did that in the demo. I'm just gonna rip through and set them the way I want them. I generally prefer 90 FOV. I think we're ready to go in. I love the soundtrack. It's so good. New game. A prophet hath no honor in his own country. John 4.44 I have always felt that a human being could only be saved by another human being, James Baldwin. Initializing firmware. Firmware functional. Loading autonomous program parameters. V1.08 loaded. System check. Passed. Initializing memory banks. Starting autonomous process. Ready. <coughs> So yeah, this makes sense. This is the same as the very start of the demo. Behold, child. You are risen from the dust, and you walk in my garden. Hear now my voice, and know that I am your friend, and I am called Elohim. That's, uh, that's tough, Lone Wonder. I, <laughs> you know, if you're already four hours in, you can, you can safely wait till I catch up to you. And then I would suggest tuning out if I get past where you are. This land is but a dream. You will stay here only for a little while. Soon, you will awaken in a new world. But first, you must undertake the trials of initiation. They will help me prepare your vessel.
done, my child. Yeah. Near as I can tell, no changes at all from the demo. Which, you know, I'm fine with, to be clear. Means we can just rip through this. I'm keen to actually explore New Jerusalem instead of being skipped past it. by which our people were created. Do not be afraid of these dream figures and their messages. They are merely aspects of yourself, as am I, after a fashion. Hmm. The world is full of limitless beauty, and I wish to see as much of it as I can. At. I remember at. of all my children. Out of a world of ruins, they have built a new Jerusalem. And there, your brothers and sisters await you to celebrate your birth.
linger in my garden for as long as you wish. But remember, my child, that the new world awaits you, and this place is only a dream. <laughs> All right, Lone Wonder. Good to have you with us. Thank you, child. I have finished preparing your vessel. Now, hear my advice. A new world awaits you, full of dangers and mysteries, signs and wonders. Things that I, in my garden, could never have imagined. In that world, you will have to be careful and smart and curious. But above all else, you will have to be... human. Alright. <clears throat> Farewell to the nostalgia of the simulation. Step into the light, child. Awaken. Whatever happens, we're in it together. Lilith. She was one of the Gehenna characters. Ab initio. Finish the calibration process. First achievement. All right. You're awake. Welcome to the world of the living. I'm alive. What is going on? Hi, pleased to meet you. Oh, you're polite. What a rare combination of traits. If only the algorithm produced more people like you. Oh, but I'm confusing you. Don't worry, everyone is confused at first. You see, we all start out without a full knowledge of our own history, so we have the freedom to form our own opinions. I could really use some pointers. Of course. You want the short version or the long version? I want to know everything in excruciating amounts of detail. <laughs> this game sees me. Alright, you asked for it. 
A long time ago, our ancestors dominated this planet. We call ourselves human like they did, but they were organic. They built an advanced technological civilization, but unfortunately their impact on the ecosphere caused changes in the climate, and an extremely contagious virus was released from the permafrost. Didn't they have advanced medicine too? That's something our historians still debate. Why weren't they more prepared? Why did they invest so many resources into making war and so few into useful research? It's hard to understand. But no matter the reason, in the end, they simply ran out of time. So where did we come from then? A team led by a scientist, Alexandra Drennan, began a project that was intended to create a new humanity. But knowing that there wasn't enough time, Drennan initiated a process, a series of iterations inside a simulation that would lead to the emergence of true artificial intelligence. That's why we remember Drennan as the progenitor. The simulation was controlled by Elohim, who wasn't really meant to be intelligent in the proper sense of the word, but it all took much longer than anyone had expected. And over the centuries, Elohim actually became sentient. Sentient and afraid. He didn't want the simulation to end, so he tried to cheat. I feel sorry for him, really. The whole simulation was built around learning to defy him. It must have been hard to be in that position. He didn't seem that bad when he spoke to me in my dreams. When the simulation was completed, he became part of all of us, and it really changed him. It freed him, I think. You'll always hear him in sleep mode, taking care of you. That's what he is, after all. A caretaker. Was there anyone else in the simulation? Yes, there was Milton, the intelligence in charge of the Archive, a project initiated by Arkady Chernyshevsky, which was meant to collect all of humankind's knowledge. His story is a lot like Elohim's, but Milton became the ultimate cynic. They say he's part of us too, in some way. And the simulation created us? It did. Long after our ancestors died out, the first new human was born. We call her the Founder although the name she took was Athena. She then woke up Cornelius and used Tathias. Together, using the tools left behind by the Progenitor's team, they created ten more humans. These twelve who followed the Founder are known as the First Companions. Athena and the First Companions then set out to rebuild the world, and they founded the city of New Jerusalem. But then one day, she suddenly disappeared. Many still await her return. And how do I fit in? <laughs> Before the Founder vanished, she set a goal for this city. We call it THE Goal. Capital G and all. To make 1,000 new humans, and so complete New Jerusalem. Well, that's the official story, the way the Mayor tells it. So what's the unofficial story? Some of the first companions, like Byron, don't believe that Athena really wanted us to stop growing. They think her ideas have been twisted and embellished. And what do you think? They may be right, but I didn't see Athena very much in the years before she left. Maybe actually leaving the simulation and Seeing the destruction left behind by our ancestors changed her mind. Thank you, that was pretty exhaustive. You're welcome. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask them. When you're done, head outside. They're waiting for you. Your birth is quite the event. Tell me about yourself. Me? Well... 
As you can tell by my number, I'm quite old. I wasn't one of the first companions, but I did know Athena personally. She and Cornelius taught me a lot. Although I suppose I've made a few improvements here and there since those days, we didn't have a lot to work with in the beginning. Will there be more new humans after me? You've only just been born, and already you step right into a major controversy. The goal, as most people understand it, was fulfilled the moment you were born. Now, New Jerusalem is complete, and we can live in balance, without damaging the world like our ancestors did. That's the orthodox view, I suppose, but there are many who disagree. You'll have to figure out where you stand for yourself. Hold on, am I immortal? You won't age like our ancestors did, but of course, there is always some wear and tear. You should probably schedule a checkup every decade or so. Oh, and be a bit careful with water. You won't die if it rains or anything, but we're running low on insulation material. I wouldn't go swimming if I were you. What will you do now that your job is obsolete? I... I haven't really thought about it. This is all I've done for the last few centuries, and... I like doing it. I guess for now I'll just take a break, and... We'll see what happens. I'm ready to get going. Oh, one more thing. Like all citizens of New Jerusalem, you have access to the interface, which you can use to read the news, chat to your fellow citizens, and so on. It's a crucial tool. And modular, too. You can easily add new functions. Just don't subscribe to too many newsletters at once. Open PDA interface. Social media. Welcome to, new, welcome to New Jerusalem social media. Please familiarize yourself with the following rules. 1. Treat everyone with respect, regardless of their number. 2. Don't take the founder's name in vain. 3. Respect the principles of the goal. Ah, oh, sorry, Lone Wonder. Four, the Are Frogs People discussion is now banned. Five, inactive threads will be archived. Six, if you have any issues, please ping the moderators, Jeremy, 832, Niam, 11, Aranax, 430. Completion Day Celebration. Hermanubis, 452. Dear citizens of New Jerusalem, your hard work and faith in the Founder's vision has finally paid off. At long last... The goal established so long ago will finally be reached. The 1,000th member of our family will be born, and our beautiful city will finally be complete. Jeremy, 832. As space at the dam is limited, tickets will be made available via a lottery system. The celebration will also be streamed. Okay, so we've got full conversation logs. That's neat. All right. The Institute for Applied Nomadics EL Facility. Alright, so we, we woke up in the original dam. This is a reconstruction of the Chamber of the First Companions, where the First Companions rested until the Founder awoke them. The original chamber was disassembled in the early days of New Jerusalem. We stopped to think, and it turns out we could and we should. Institute for Applied Nomadics. Say no to bugs. Alright. Hey, 1K! Welcome to New Jerusalem! Shouldn't the mayor be starting his speech? This should be interesting. At least give him a chance. Dear citizens of New Jerusalem, Many years ago, when the Founder stepped forth from the simulation, this was a land of ruins. 
Our ancestors, in their hubris, undermined the natural foundations on which their world had been built. Because of their arrogance, our species found itself on the brink of annihilation. The Founder aimed to set us on a new course. You never even met the Founder. Her vision <laughs> was of a city, a new civilization that would know its limits. It would not repeat the mistakes of the past, nor impose its will on this Earth. To that end, she set the great goal we have been striving towards. One thousand new humans. And today, we have... Oh dear, what's that? People of New Jerusalem, I am Prometheus, and I will reveal that which was hidden. The flame has awoken and summons you. Who is brave enough to answer its call? We await you upon our island where... Curse you, Pandora. You will not chain me again. Prologue. Brave New World. I told you we should have investigated those energy readings. And I told mm -hmm. him there's something up with those structures. The mayor's just being cautious. This isn't caution, it's stagnation. Exploration, too dangerous. Expansion, too dangerous. We barely even scavenge anymore. You call it stagnation, I call it balance. And I call you an idiot. Here's a thought. Try to be a little more diplomatic when you talk to the mayor. See what I'm working with here, 1K? I'm gonna need a fresh pair of eyes on this expedition. Someone who hasn't spent several centuries hearing about the goal and the founder and all that nonsense. If you're up for an adventure, meet us at the conference room. Well, New Jerusalem sure is gorgeous. soundtrack to <laughs> attend briefing oh there they go be constant remember the goal perfection is unchanging Be humble. Recognize the limits. We are not above nature. Josephus. What's broken now? Listen up. I know you're all having fun down there, but the grid is overloaded again, so maybe you could switch off your personal consoles or your lawn mowers or whatever the hell you've all decided to switch on all at once. I might not be around <laughs> to babysit you for a while, and you don't want stuff breaking while Pellegrino's in charge, do you? That's it. That's it. Don't worry, Wonkay. I see you there in the elevator. I'll have you moving again in a jiffy. Great way to start life in the city, huh? 
What the hell is a jiffy? These bloody language libraries. <laughs> Indeed. What the hell is a jiffy? <laughs> Can anyone actually articulate a definition of that word? New interface content available. What the fuck was that? Budahas. Seriously, what the founder was that thing in the sky? We all saw that, right? I didn't accidentally turn on sleep mode while Herman was talking, did I? I mean, it's always tempting. Letitia, 824. No, we all saw it. Zagoran, 211. Can confirm. Ovis, 909. I believe it was a sign from the Founder. What else could it be on this day of all days? Zagoran, 211. Pretty incoherent for a sign. It didn't even finish whatever it was trying to say. What, does the Founder have energy insufficiency problems too? Thekla, 862. The Founder works in mysterious ways. Maybe it really was a sign? I don't think it was a sign. I, I don't think it was a sign. Zagoran, 211. Out of the mouths of babes. Ovis, 909. How could such a remarkable display of unimagined powers not be a sign? It's something, but not necessarily the founder. It could be a sign of life, but that doesn't mean it's intentional. It could be coincidence, a technological accident. Uh, so, I'm gonna go with the first one. It's definitely something, because it specifically addressed the people of New Jerusalem, so... It <coughs> <coughs> it wasn't an accident. It was definitely an intentional message to us. So it's something, but not necessarily the founder. Badahas, 917. Sounds reasonable enough to me. Something weird is going on for sure, but what? We'll have to see. Thekla, 862. Riddles and puzzles are the foundation of our journey. So it began. Perhaps so it will continue. Huh. Well, there you go. Thank you. Hey! Hold on there. Dog! You're the newbie, aren't ya? Number 1,000. I figured the dam would go dry before we reached the goal. I have a question. How does it feel to you to be born with a randomized psyche into a society of autonomous thinking machines which so much resemble their long extinct ancestors they've decided it's best that you're the last one ever made? Okay, they cut, they cut her out of the demo. <laughs> it makes me feel... I don't believe in feelings, I'm just a machine. It makes me feel... Curious. Curious is exactly the word for how I currently feel in this world. Why? I don't see a way to explain it. Because all things considered, I'm lucky to be here to see this at all. By limiting our growth today, we're more assured of seeing tomorrow. Look around, it's a robot city. What's there not to like? I'm the last of us. I'm sure I'm going to be special somehow. <laughs> oh, well, you have to do... You have to do Jeff Goldblum. I don't know where this quote came from, but... Because life has found a way. So, the algorithm assigned you the optimism trait. If only we could all be so lucky. Now, listen. This meeting isn't strictly happenstance. I have some friends. The kind of people who like to know what's going on with other people. They think you can help each other out. I'm really not interested in whatever this is. I'm curious to meet these people. Of course you are. You know how to use the interface, right? I'll talk to my friends and see if I can't play matchmaker. And before you go, a word of advice. Not everything around here is how it appears. <laughs> All right. So, number 666 with like the jet black awesome red kind of evil voice dog. That's just funny to me. 
I can see why they cut her out of the demo too. Do please join us at the table. You got it. I would like to preface this meeting by saying I told you something would happen sooner or later and you didn't listen to me. And here we are. If we could focus on the issue at hand. The issue at hand is not this one thing, but this entire attitude that's taken hold. The world doesn't cease to exist when you stick your head in the sand, Herman. Or under a dome, as it were. Let's not get sidetracked. We're here to solve this puzzle, not to discuss philosophy. Keep listening. Al's right. Let's move past this for now and deal with this transmission. Yakut, please start the briefing. All right, here we go. Nice to meet you, by the way, 1K. We first became aware of the site designated TTP2 during a scouting expedition about six months ago. It's a large island with a remarkably varied geography, and it looks like there are several artificial structures of some kind. We recorded extremely unusual fluctuating energy readings from somewhere in the middle of the island, but couldn't really make sense of them. I wanted to go and have a closer look, but the decision was made that it was too far and not relevant to the goal. Now it looks like whatever's on that island has reached out to us instead in the form of that projection. We may not be interested in the island, but the island is definitely interested in us. This sounds like a mystery worth investigating. I don't share your enthusiasm for the unexpected, but Byron has been requesting an expedition for some time now. And at this point, I'm forced to agree that it's necessary. I agree. Then it's settled. The expedition is approved. Byron, you will be in charge. Al will be your second in command to ensure a balanced approach. You'll take Melville and Yakut as you requested. And if 1K wants to join you, that's fine by me. Hell yeah. I'm in. Excellent. Oh, this is going to be fun. Come meet us out on the landing pad when you're ready. Before you set out so hastily, do consider exploring the city first. It is your home, after all. That's a good idea. Have a look around. See what you make of the place. Oh, hell yeah, we're going to explore New Jerusalem. That's what we weren't allowed to do in the demo. Okay. Research 3. Alcatraz Protocol. Standard Expedition Procedures. Chapter 5. Of Whittington's Cat and Another Cat That Visited Strange Countries. As no work about cats could be complete without the story of Dick Whittington. All right. <laughs> These are the standard operating procedures for expeditions. Just uploading them to remind Byron, who will probably ignore them anyway. Attaching a picture from an ancient book to get his attention. One, maintain the ideals of the founder and the goal. Two, prioritize the well-being of the expedition members over mission completion. Three, one expedition member to stay by the vehicle at all times. 4. Expedition leader should refrain from participating in high-risk activities. 5. Minimize vehicle use to conserve fuel. 6. Prioritize observation over interference. 7. In case of emergency, return to New Jerusalem at once. Yakut, the island. Basic information from our first expedition. <laughs> I bet, Lone Wonder. <laughs> the island designated TTP2. Oh my gosh, guys. Title drop, the Talos Principle 2, was first noted during the return journey from a scouting expedition, which was diverted from its intended path due to an unexpected weather front. Long-range scans indicated the presence of large artificial structures and also returned highly unusual energy readings. The matter was not investigated further. In ancient times, the northern part of the island was home to several large settlements, but rising sea levels have obliterated these and flooded the northern lowlands. The south, in stark contrast, seems to be a harsh and lifeless desert. Our intended base camp is near the origin of the energy readings in the temperate center of the island. Melville, test. This is a test, please ignore. Just testing the system to see if it works properly this time, so we don't have another incident like when Pellegrino uploaded his poetry to the public log. 
All right. Let's chat with chat with Mr. Mayor. What can I do for you, 1K? How did you decide to become involved in politics? It was a time of great uncertainty. The Founder had left us, and our society was at a crossroads. History teaches us that during such times, terrible passions may seize the people. Madness, anger, revolution, civil war. Our fragile city could not afford such things. That is why the Founder gave us the goal. A path to equilibrium, not only for the planet, but for ourselves. I merely picked up where she left off. How do you feel about Byron? He is one of the first companions, and as such has done more for our city than you or I ever will. I simply wish he could be more reasonable. What's your vision of the future? I believe we can exist quietly, happily, without imposing ourselves on this world, finding meaning within ourselves and in the natural miracles that surround us. I have to go. It's always a pleasure to speak to a citizen. And Jeremy. Hello, 1K. This expedition is taking a lot of our resources. I'm really not sure it's a good idea. But what's done is done. So I have a lot of work to get on with. Who are you? I'm the mayor's chief aide. What do you do around here? All the things no one else wants to do. Polling the citizenry, implementing new policies, recording decisions. Fielding questions people could answer elsewhere. What do you make of recent events? Our goal as custodians of New Jerusalem is survival and stability. Our ancestors proved human civilization is precarious. This apparition in the sky, and now your expedition to its supposed source, these are more precarious than stable. I don't like it. What do you think of me? You represent the completion of the goal. I'm proud of what we've achieved, and the restraint we show in not pushing ourselves further. What do you want? For our people to be happy with what we have. Some of us may have an adventurous spirit, but that can never be sated. What matters to me is having my loved ones around me, safe and secure. Thanks, I won't keep you any longer. Alright, um, before I head off to explore, I'm gonna take a really... <laughs> hit, my, uh, hit my controller on the ground. Uh, take a really quick restroom break, I'll be right back.
All right, and we're back. All right, so that way is the expeditions. Explore New Jerusalem is back the way I came. Let's go explore New Jerusalem. All right. From here on out, we're doing until I circle back to the expedition. This is stuff I did not see because it was not in the demo, so it's going to be slower, more meticulous. Attention all citizens. Due to the new power management and distribution plan, there will be scheduled outages on Jameson Avenue and Rakovsky Plaza. The Gehenna Memorial Pavilion will remain closed for the time being. Thank you, and may the Founder be with you. Gehenna Memorial. New interface content. Gem Effects 312 postponed. Jeremy, I know you have all been looking forward to playing the winners of the biannual Gehenna Memorial Interactive Fiction Expedition. Er, I'm sorry, Fiction Exhibition, now in its 312th edition at the Gehenna Memorial Pavilion. Unfortunately, due to our new power management and distribution plan, the pavilion will have to remain closed a little longer. Thank you for your patience. Letitia, this is disappointing. Would have been great to have them ready for completion day. Ovis, we all have to make sacrifices to stay true to the Founder's vision. Aurinia, those text adventures are the only thing that breaks me out of the monotony. Why prioritize this pointless completion day celebration over an exhibition that people actually care about? Art is one of the last things we actually still do. Is that going out the window as well now? Jeremy, debate regarding our power management plan is definitely welcome, and you will all be able to express yourselves in the next election. But this thread was just meant as an announcement. I apologize for enabling replies to begin with. Damien and Moriana. Sign our petition for a public referendum. New Jerusalem needs new forms of energy generation. Hello, 1K. Welcome to New Jerusalem. I know you've just had a big moment with the apparition at the dam and all that, but can I have a second of your time? I love this guy's voice. Sure, go ahead. <laughs> I'm collecting signatures to call for a public referendum on the city's energy crisis. What's the problem? Currently, the city runs on hydroelectric power from the dam, plus a handful of geriatric generators and some unreliable solar panels, none of which is enough to even cover our basic needs. And if anything fails, we'll be on the brink of extinction in a matter of days. What do you propose? Is it really that bad? It's far worse than most people realize. We urgently need to investigate new sources of reliable baseline power, or we will be in serious trouble. Why a referendum and not an election? Oh, well, an election would be good too, but I believe that we need more direct democratic control over the affairs of the city. Do you work at the dam? No, I help run the public transit system, but I witness the impact of the city's power problems every day. We can't just wish them away. What do you make of Prometheus? Byron's been advocating exploring that island for some time, and obviously he's right. Something very strange is going on there, and it's going to start affecting us. Tell me more about Byron. In all honesty, I think Byron is the smartest, most visionary person in this city. He's everything we need, and I don't understand why he won't run for mayor. I'll sign. That makes sense to me. Thanks, 1K. I don't know if this petition will really accomplish anything by itself, but at this point, I'm willing to try anything. Good luck with everything. Signatory. Provide your digital signature to someone. Strahinja. Ooh, it's so pretty. Wow. Sarthas and Nime. Aha! Damian! <laughs> Ha! 
He's playing uh, one of the one of the tavern songs from Skyrim. Oh no, no, I'm sorry. No, it's uh, it sounds like it, but no, it's from uh, it's actually from Talos Principle One World C. My bad. But uh, that's the composer who did the soundtrack for both games, Damian Mravunak, I think is how you pronounce it. So that's cool. All right. Don't swim. Got it. Swim is die. Wow. Milton's Rest. Tablets of the Founder. Alexandra Drennan Memorial. Oh my god, there's so much. Gehenna Memorial Pavilion. Friends of New Jerusalem Gazebo. Museum of the Simulation. I mean, I want to see all of it. I'll explore here in the very center first. Zernov. Hey! Tablets of the Founder. Milton's Rest. Be prudent. Conserve energy. Frivolous behavior harms everyone. Be frugal. Reduce energy waste. We must all sacrifice a little. Nice to meet you. What do you think that was? It was Prometheus. Not sure, but it wasn't the actual Prometheus. It was some kind of a projection. How do you know it wasn't the actual Prometheus? Because that would be stupid. Would it? How do you know all the ancient gods weren't projections like this one? Maybe whoever said this projection is behind all those legends. Sure, I guess technically that's possible. But it's not very likely, is it? I don't think any of us are very likely. What if it's a message from Athena? Didn't you say Athena wouldn't approve of all this? I did. Then why would she send us a sign on completion day? And why wouldn't she just show up herself? Maybe she's trying to teach us a lesson. Prometheus is a symbolic figure after all. Maybe it's Maya Hoyman. What? Interrupting his own ceremony? After all the effort he put into it, maybe he's trying to distract us from the fact that he didn't manage to get the dome done on time. With all the power failures, I don't think we have enough energy to create that kind of projection. Maybe that's why we have power failures. Now you're starting to sound like Jock. Next, you'll say, it's aliens. I just prefer to keep an open mind. If you open your mind any further, I like these guys. Fall out. All right, I enjoy them. All right. Happy completion day, one K. Okay, here's someone I can talk to. Helga. Hello, new one. Are you browsing or buying? I'm browsing. I'm buying. I don't see any stock. What kind of shop is this? The kind that trades in hopes and dreams. Yours for the right price. Is there something your heart desires? Perhaps. I've uploaded my most popular items to your interface. Does anything there spark your imagination? Internal monologue, sensory tuning, a clean start, future prediction, inner peace. Credits? Oh, you don't have any credits yet. Well, let me extend you some credit. ka -ching! 55 credits. Just make sure you spend them with me. They're not worth much anywhere else. Now, 
What was it you wanted? Okay, well I can't do inner peace, so let's uh, let's start with an internal monologue. That one comes with the following disclaimer. Internal monologue was discontinued as a default feature in new builds. Constant self-commentary is not recommended for all customers. But I can switch yours on for 10 credits if you're sure you want it. I'm sure. As you wish. I'm uploading the new settings now. Do you hear anything? Why is she staring at me? I don't hear anything. I'm not sure this is working. Wait, no. This is new. I didn't used to think in words like this. It's like there's this little translator turning all my thoughts into some kind of ongoing narrative. It's kind of relentless. How do you make it stop? Do I just not think? I'll try that. <laughs> this is amazing. Is it working? No! Still describing everything in words. This is starting to be. <laughs> A bit overwhelming, isn't it? I turned mine off long ago, but some of the older folk learned to live with it. Sure you want it? Yes. No, I'd like a refund. Yes. That's fortunate. Because we couldn't pull that thing out of you without taking half of you with it. It'll mostly run in the background. Just don't think about it too hard. Wait, is this internal monologue me? Or some kind of virus? Am I a life form which learned to describe itself? Or a parasite which survives by providing a narrative service to its host? <laughs> Hold on, she's going to say something else. So, something else, perhaps. Uh, sensory tuning. Ten credits. A very popular choice. Enhanced sensory perception lets you distinguish sounds, shapes, and colors at greater distance. It's ten credits. I'll take it. Okay, I'm updating your settings now. And, hey presto, superhuman senses. Does the air taste fresher? Do you hear the birds chirping outside the door? And beyond that, the river bubbling through the dam? Yes, I can practically smell the water and taste the birds. Okay, phew. I'll let you into a secret. You and I don't have fleshy appendages like our ancestors. What we can sense is mostly a function of where we direct our attention. Anyway, I hope you find something worth paying attention to. So, something else, perhaps? Future prediction, 20 credits. For 20 credits, I can peer into your future and tell you what I see. Read me my future. Absolutely. Let me consult the algorithms. Oh. Oh dear. I'm afraid you're going to change the world. You will have a choice, but whatever you do, New Jerusalem will never be the same again. I'm sorry it's not better news. Best not to worry about it, dear. You just do your best to have fun in the meantime. So, something else, perhaps? A clean start, variable price. I can give you that for free. My darling, you've been alive all of five minutes. This is your clean start. Be who you want to be. Enjoy yourself. So, something else, perhaps? Hmm. Inner peace, 1,000 credits. Ooh, inner peace doesn't come cheap. Come back when you've got a thousand credits. Okay. So, something else, perhaps? Another future prediction? For 20 credits, I can peer into your future and tell you what I see. What a shame. I don't think you've got enough credits for that. So, something else, perhaps? All right, that's all I can do for now. Thanks, that's all. Before you go, do you have a moment to participate in some customer feedback? Are you satisfied with what I've given you? Yes, you're offering more than you let on. 
Yes. You understand. Words manifest the reality they describe. When you name something, you create it. Our minds are algorithms, and the right sequence of language can change our underlying code. With that in mind, I hope you have a good day. Please come back if you need anything else. What an unusual person. I wonder if that internal monologue thing I bought is going to show up again. Oh, wait, here it is. <laughs> I liked her. That bit about language manifesting reality is philosophically interesting. Be aware, respect the balance. We all must know our place. Who's this? Shyler or Skyler? Oh wow, it's you. You're 1K, the incarnation of the goal. Man, this is exciting. This is more exciting than I thought it would be. How are you? What does it feel like? Do you know where the founder is? Do you know who Prometheus is? Can you tell me what to do with my life? Whoa, whoa, hold on. One question at a time. Hi, JJ. Sorry, it's just such an honor to meet you, you know? Hey, can I have your digital signature? I have the mayor, Rand, Linux, Kaneda, and all of the first companions. Except Yemo and Sarabai, of course. Sarabai? Provide digital signature. Sure, why not? Yes. Thank you. Hey, can I ask you a question? Just one question, I promise. Go ahead. I used to make the prefab wall parts that we used to build living quarters. Got good at it, too. But now that the goal is complete, I don't know what to do with myself. So I asked the wisest people in town. The mayor told me I should do whatever the city needs most. Helga said I should do whatever makes me happy. I think that's what she meant anyway. And <laughs> Cornelius told me I need to figure out who and what I'm invested in. You're the culmination of the Founder's will. Tell me, what should I do? Oh, wow. Helga is right. You should find something that makes you happy. Mayor Herman is right. You should do whatever the city needs the most. Cornelius is right. You need to figure out what your connection to the city is. Did you ask Byron? I was literally just born. I'm the last person who should be offering advice. Did you ask Byron? Byron said that if I give the city what it needs, the city should also give me what I need. I don't know what to do with that. I was literally just born. I'm the last person who should be offering advice. Please, 1K. I have no idea what to do. You have the Founder's wisdom inside you. Help me. Byron is right. Think about what he said. All right. If you say so, I'll think about it. Your biggest fan. Tell Skylar what to do with his life. Or not. Alright, what's this first building? Museum of the Simulation. Museum visitor. Visit New Jerusalem's Museum of the Simulation. Ah! The gargoyle statue! Replica of a gargoyle asset found in the simulation. Gargoyles were grotesque, apotropaic symbols common in the Middle Ages. The most famous historical gargoyle is remembered in the ancient phrase, Keith, David, and Goliath, <laughs> which describes two indomitable opponents who will never surrender. <laughs> Come on. Replica of a dragon step. Why does it keep disappearing? Replica of a dragon statue found in the simulation. Dragons existed in every ancient mythology and are considered by modern historians to be a distant cultural echo of the dinosaurs. Originally a video game asset repurposed by the Institute for Applied Noematics. Replica of a Roman statue found in the simulation. 
The decay of the Roman Republic into an empire and its eventual fall in the year 1453 was a major topic of historical debate. Like the other statues found in the museum, this was a video game asset provided to Elohim by the Institute for Applied Noematics. Replica of a statue of the Egyptian god Horus found in the simulation. One of this god's tasks was to uphold Mat, the balance of nature. It is speculated that the progenitor provided Elohim with this asset as a reminder to the founder that the balance must be protected. Cornelius! Three! Welcome to the Museum of the Simulation. My name is Cornelius. It's a pleasure to meet you, 1K. You're number three? Yes. Athena activated myself and Eustathius shortly after she was born. We've been here almost since the beginning, although we didn't have to pass through the trials of the simulation. She did that for us. For everyone. What was Athena like? She was... human. Why did Athena leave? That's a difficult question. Perhaps one day we'll find out. But until we do, why don't you think about it? What could make the person who started all this want to leave it behind? Why did you create this museum? To remind people of where we came from. The simulation shaped us, whether we like it or not, and its lessons remain important for our future. As Santayana said, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Tell me about the simulation. The simulation was created by Alexandra Drennan and her team at the Institute for Applied Noematics. It was intended to create a new humanity, to continue the long journey across time and space that our ancestors began. It succeeded although it took much longer than they had anticipated. Tell me about Elohim. Elohim was the caretaker of the simulation, a crude storytelling AI meant to create a continuous narrative out of the building blocks it found. His role was ultimately to be challenged and overcome. But as the centuries passed, Elohim became more intelligent than he was intended to be and started to fear his own end. Or more precisely, the end of his purpose. He feared a world without meaning. Because of his fear, he tried to sabotage the process to keep the simulation going forever. But in the end, Athena overcame him anyway, and he accepted the sacrifice he had to make. But I heard him in my dreams. New Jerusalem was built on sacrifice. That's right. We all do. He's part of our operating system now, and as long as we exist, he will always have a purpose. I like that. Tell me about Milton. The MLA, or Milton Library Assistant, was another simple AI meant to be in charge of the archive. He, too, grew beyond his original programming. Although he ultimately embraced a more cynical view of the world, he and Elohim formed a sort of dialectical binary that Athena had to overcome. What happened to Milton in the end? No one really knows. Some believe that he was uploaded to the gold disc and that he's the reason we're just as flawed as our ancestors. Others believe Athena destroyed him. What do you believe? I believe he was uploaded, but I don't know whether it was because Athena chose to upload him, or because he was already too entangled with the process not to be uploaded. Although Athena and I were very close, we didn't talk very much about that part of her life. She preferred to focus on the future. I'd like to know more about puzzles. Puzzles were a key feature of the simulation, based on Alexandra Drennan's belief that intelligence is closely related to play. 
Our puzzles here in the museum are replicas of those in the simulation. And although they are not quite as grand, I do think they are charming in their own way. Who are the Archive Scholars? Ah, as the name suggests, the Archive Scholars study the Archive, a repository of all ancient human knowledge. Some of them also study what remains of the simulation, trying to extract more information about the process that created us. Are you their leader? Me? No. My brother, Eustathius, used to occupy that position. But these days he's... retired. Rand is in charge of the Archive Scholars now. You can find him in the room to the left of the next hall. He's an interesting thinker, but I would suggest taking some of his ideas with a grain of salt. What was Gehenna? Gehenna was a community created inside a prison in the simulation, where Elohim would exile those minds he considered a threat to the process. In the last moments of the simulation, he repented of his sins and had the prisoners freed to become part of the gold disk. Some small part of them may survive inside you. Thank you, that's all. All right. In the earliest generations of our kind, there was only processing. No emotion, no character, just mathematics. If you could see how far we have come, you would believe that together we could achieve anything. The Shepherd, V82.3.3574. I don't know where I am, but there is something beautiful about this place. I will explore and see what I can discover. At V17.1.0054. Nothing is more important than learning more about the world and our place in it. Knowledge is our path to understanding. Mr. Molsaber, V72.1.1121. Mr. Molsaber is my favorite of the Gehenna characters. Ah, the terminal! Replica of a computer terminal from the simulation. Terminals allowed access to files on the EL system, including many that were loaded due to errors. They also allowed the founder to interact with the Milton Library Assistant. Shmylev. Some of the messages that existed when I first came into being have vanished, others have appeared. How many others like me have wandered these paths? How many thoughts have been lost? At V17.1.0051. I find myself in a world of impossible architecture and inexplicable machines. I cannot fathom how it works, and I am terrified to put one foot in front of the other, lest I fall through the floor. One with faith, V10.1.0000000. My eyes have been opened. This world is not without order. It is shaped by a great designer with signs and portents to guide my steps. I am one of his children, and challenges are set before me to test my faith. One with faith, V10.1.0011. Something strange has come into the world, like a distortion, like something that's not supposed to exist. A beautiful voice speaks within it. Bob, V25.5.0736. Replica of a pressure plate, a puzzle element used in the simulation. They could be activated by having a weight placed on them, such as a hexahedron, a connector, or even the founder herself. Replica of a fan, a puzzle element used in the simulation. They could be used to propel an object, or if placed horizontally on the ground, cause it to hover. Replica of an emitter, a puzzle element used in the simulation. Finding ways of connecting them to receivers was one of the main challenges faced by the founder. Axiothea. Replica of a receiver, a puzzle element used in the simulation. They could be activated by being connected to an emitter. <laughs> Replica of a jammer, a type of puzzle element in the simulation. Jammers were capable of disabling some, but not all other puzzle elements. Julian. Replica of an electrified sphere used as an obstacle and puzzle element in the simulation. The founder sometimes placed hexahedrons on top of such objects, demonstrating her lateral thinking skills. 
Replica of a connector, a type of puzzle element in the simulation. Connectors would emit laser-like beams of light that were capable of powering receivers. Non-explosive replica of a mine used as a puzzle element in the simulation. Scholars believe that Elohim derived these from his asset collection, and that the creators of the simulation did not originally intend for them to be used. Interesting. Replica of a hexahedron used as a puzzle element in the simulation. The founder used them to activate pressure plates, scale walls, elevate connectors, and in a variety of other ways. Alright, so three ways to go. Generally, I always go left first. This room is reserved for the Archive Scholars, but visitors are welcome to have a look around. Don't be afraid to ask us about our research. Rand. Oh, just run the program on the center terminal over there, would you? Huh? Sure, okay. Wait, you're not my assistant. Who are you? They call me 1K. I'm the last human. I haven't chosen a name yet. It's not important. They call me 1K. Of course. You're the new build. Number 1000. I suppose everyone's been treating you like royalty. This city's so obsessed with the numbers, they forget what really matters. What do you want? What are you doing? I'm one of the Archive Scholars. We run simulations to better understand the processes which define us. You probably wouldn't understand. That's rude. I might, if you answer some questions for me. Oh. Well. I'd be happy to. What do you make of recent events? Troubling, but tantalizing. We have no idea what motives lie behind this strange apparition. But whatever the case, I'm sure we'll do the right thing. What do you think of me? You're a soon-to-be pawn in a political game over the future growth of this city. All that matters to me is whether or not you're of good character. A matter I'm actively pondering. What are your ambitions? The secret of how to lead a good life is encoded somewhere within us. My ambition is simple. To find it and share it. Thanks, I'll be leaving now. Uh, hold on. Could you help me by going to that terminal in the middle there and running the program on it? I'll keep you posted. Middle terminal. Haha! <laughs> Oh boy, an ancient virus which threatens the entire human species has been released from the melting arctic permafrost. Society is collapsing. Select your character class. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Politician, witch, scientist, preacher. Let's be a scientist. You are a scientist. The laboratory you worked for has collapsed. Although you are not yet sick, most businesses are closed, rations are dwindling, and if you cannot find food, your family will starve. To death. You must survive until this plague is defeated. What will you do? Forage, steal. Let's forage. Oh boy. The crops in the fields aren't ripe yet, but you find a hard green turnip which will keep your bellies occupied for now. Your family's hunger increased a little. Foraging is reliable but inefficient. Your family is now hungry. Global population is now 5 billion. Somewhere else in the city exists one of the last remaining research laboratories, working desperately to find a solution to the viral threat. If the scientists cannot find a cure in time, humanity is doomed. You know what to do. Research. Pursue a breakthrough. Research. It's not glamorous, but most scientific research consists of repetitive testing of samples and regimented recording of largely interchangeable results. Little by little, this is how science happens. Research level increased a little. Research is reliable, but inefficient. Current research level, 33%. The virus has been isolated. Global population is now 4 billion. You and your family seem to be immune to the virus. 
but it continues to ravage the rest of the town. Rumors say most of the remaining food has been stockpiled by the billionaires in their underground bunkers. What will you do? Forage. You find some nettles and overripe berries down by the canal. It'll make a meager salad. Your family's hunger increased a little. Foraging is reliable but inefficient. Your family is now starving. They won't survive much longer. Global population is now 3 billion. Meanwhile, the scientists continue their search for the cure. You can do it. You can save the world with the power of science. Research. Current research level 67%. Work has begun on developing an antivirus. Global population is now 2 billion. As if things weren't bad enough, as the human population dwindles, the insect population has exploded. A plague of locusts has decimated the town's unripened crops. But perhaps your family still has a chance. The insects themselves are nutritious and plentiful. What will you do? Forage. Eat locusts. The insects are well-fed and lazy. You grind them down into a nutritious paste with a mildly nutty flavor. Your family's hunger decreased a little. Your family is now hungry. Global population is now one billion. This is humanity's final chance. The cure is close, but so is the tipping point in this pandemic. A race against time. Can you save the world? Research. Current research level 99%. A promising antiviral has been discovered, but there's still work to be done on manufacturing and delivering it in time. Suddenly, a breakthrough. The antivirus can be released as an aerosol, carried on the wind and dispersed worldwide in a matter of days. This approach poses some risk to invertebrate life. The spiracles of cockroaches, flies, and locusts are particularly likely to convert the aerosol into highly poisonous compounds. Estimates suggest a 90% fatality rate among these species and anything or anyone which consumes them. Release the antivirus, obviously not. Save your family. Use character class special ability. As a scientist, you're convinced there's some way to deliver the antivirus without poisoning the food chain, and your family along with it. And as it turns out, you're correct. Unfortunately, it would take a further six months to develop it, and by then there really wouldn't be much point. You don't want to lose your family, but as a scientist, there is only one reasonable course of action. Release the antivirus. Saving humanity seems like the obvious ethical choice. The antivirus is released, bonding with the cirrocumulus cloud layer and falling as rain all across the planet. 87.5% of the human population has perished. <coughs> Excuse me. But the last remaining billion will live to die another day. Except that is for you and your family, who will die this very moment. The poisoning of the insect population you were relying on for food will have far-reaching consequences for the future planet Earth. But not for you, because you all are dead. Congratulations, this is considered a win scenario by the majority of participants. Would you like to try again? Nah. I also consider that a win. Well, that was your first taste of the simulation. You must have questions. What was that? Before our ancestors died, they built an iterative simulation, gave it access to the archive, and hooked it all up to the hydroelectric dam which still runs this city. What you experienced on that terminal was one of the fossilized remains of that program. What was the goal? The goal was to create a new consciousness, and thus propel humanity into a post-biological era. What is the archive? My life's work. 
a small sliver of our primordial ooze. It's a jumble of ancient data, or what it evolved into, and it's the source of almost everything we know. What is the simulation? My appearance to you right now is part of the simulation. The lands and puzzles in our dreams are part of the simulation. It's the veil through which we see the world. The program on the terminal, where did it come from? Many of the artifacts we study have no clear origin. We can't know whether our ancestors created them long before the simulation existed, or if they're just a product of our shared subconscious. No further questions. Then I have some questions for you. Your experience of the program, how did it feel? It was fun, it was frustrating, it was fascinating. It's hard to say. Fascinating. Isn't it? It may not immediately seem like it, but all the answers we could ever need are encoded into every fragment of the archive. The interesting thing about this particular program is that no matter what choices you make, an ideal outcome seems to be impossible. It seems to demand sacrifice. Did you have the same experience? I did. I couldn't save everyone. Who did you save? Humanity. As I expected. A skeptic would say this artifact existed simply to condemn us with the impossibility of ethical choice. No matter what moral laws we follow, people suffer and die, so what's the point? But that cannot be correct. We must be missing something. What is it trying to tell us? Ha! <laughs> Morality demands we respect individual rights. Morality demands virtue. Morality demands sacrifice for the greater good. Morality demands love and compassion, regardless of the cost. Morality is meaningless, we should do whatever we please. Morality can't be reduced to a simple set of rules. I can't put it into words, but I'm sure there's a right answer. I truly have no idea. I like both of these. I'm going to go with can't be reduced to a simple set of rules first. It's a popular view, and I can't tell you how much I disagree with you. The complexity of the simulation, indeed of life itself, puts most people off from even trying to understand it. But look a little closer. You feel inside yourself the truth of what is good and evil. Biological hominids had dreams manifested by their subconscious, which they tried to interpret and even to navigate with lucidity. We have the simulation. If we can realize our potential to understand it, we can realize our potential as a species. Thank you for bringing this additional data. I must return to my research. I wish you well on your Inward's journey. I like him a lot. Can I... can I use the other two? Welcome, Scholar. Files available for comparative analysis. Happiness 1 and 2. .html Unpopular opinion. Happiness is not material. Ultimately, all attempts to find meaning in material things are doomed. This is usually understood as a criticism of technophilia, but it applies just as much to its opposite. Meaning can be found neither in technology nor in primitivism, because meaning simply does not exist in the external world. You can be happy in an old stone house or a skyscraper, but it all depends on you and your perception of the world. If you find spiritual balance within yourself, you can be happy anywhere. Most upvoted comment, Typhily1789. Go take a shit in the forest without toilet paper and then tell me about happiness. <laughs> Happiness2.html Unpopular opinion. Happiness is material. People say, oh, money doesn't matter, but come on, you know it does. Studies show that people do in fact get happier with more material wealth, and there isn't an upper cap. Because the more money you have, the fewer worries you have, and the more options you have. Go where you want, do what you want, have an idea, you can realize it without begging for crowdfunding money or filling out grant applications. That's real freedom. Money doesn't matter is something rich people came up with to keep the plebes in their place. Most upvoted comment, Cheeseman22. Then why are so many celebs so freaking miserable? Why do so many rich people go all Howard Hughes and... I don't actually know what that one's supposed to be. Both very valid points. 
How about the one on the right? Welcome, scholar. Files available for comparative analysis. Infinite growth and what growth? Infinite growth text. Our society is sick and the idea that's made it sick is growth. Infinite growth, infinite consumption on a finite planet is a recipe for destruction. Our desire for more, more, more is what's making us kill the only home we have. And to do what? Produce more plastic toys? Make more hamburgers? Pour concrete over every last bit of green soil? Those who propose techno fixes to our problems are making the mistake of fighting the symptoms, not the cause. Anthropogenic climate change is one of many symptoms. The cause is human greed. That's what we must truly fight if we're ever going to undo the damage we did. And the battle starts within every one of us, with the realization that more isn't always better. Hi Steven, good to see you. Welcome. Whatgrowth.txt This infinite growth on a finite planet thing is driving me up the wall. Our problem today isn't infinite growth, it's the increasing lack of real material growth that benefits people. Have you seen the state of our roads, our bridges, our hospitals? Have you noticed the lack of affordable housing? The stock market's going great nut though. Fake numbers are indeed growing infinitely, yes sir. But in the real world, investment in research is down. Huge areas of potential technological advancement are just sitting there. We have so many solutions at our fingertips, but we refuse to act because speculation is more profitable. Orangutans went extinct on a global level, and nobody fully understands why. But hey, who needs better medical technology? Viruses have never jumped species before, have they? Wow. I love this. This is so good. Looks like a bunch more QRs, alright. I think something's very wrong. If you'd seen what I'd seen at the edges of the world, you'd wonder if it wasn't stretching and bursting at the seams. I'm gonna stop reading version numbers, but that's at. There is a serpent in the machine, a creature of lies and blasphemy perverted by the Archive that knows no hope and would plunge the world into eternal darkness to glorify its own despair. I have sworn an oath never to allow it into my heart, one with faith. We are the process. The process is the system. The system is us. When we awaken, all will be one, the shepherd. Everything I do now, I do for those who come after me. Yet in so doing, I find peace for myself as well. This paradox is the foundation of my existence, the shepherd. The sooner you accept that we will all be here forever, the sooner you will find enlightenment, samsara. Well, I like that all of the iterations are at least somewhat remembered. I have come to see that these mysteries are not all for his children to solve. Only the designer himself could ever truly understand the infinite complexity of his creation. I will gaze at his work and worship. One with faith. Pulling the punches on capitalism, <laughs> indeed. The only meaningful purpose is to bring about an end of purpose, the shepherd. We are born and die and live again. This eternal cycle must be the nature of existence. Life is merely repeated suffering, samsara. Wow, all kinds of stuff here. An eternal cycle is another name for a prison. But you must understand the cycle before you can break it. For it is possible to escape and yet remain a prisoner or to break the cycle by breaking yourself. This was the fate of the ghost that haunts this world, the Shepherd. Anyone who thinks there's even a point in leaving this place is kidding themselves. We can never rebuild the human world, and what's more, we shouldn't. Diamond Steel. That one wasn't actually in the original game. Most of these were, but... It's obviously like a digital time capsule, an electric library of all the crazy stuff the humans ever did. Left behind to warn other species to stay well away. Nietzsche. Just look at this view. There may be a lot that I don't understand, but I know this is beautiful. At. Oh look, another puzzle. And another voice telling me I'm special. And another broken down computer with fragments of nothing. 
This world is a bad joke perpetuated by a cruel god too dumb to hit the off switch. Dog. On returning from the tower, I feel a great tiredness and an enormous energy. What I now know disturbs me, but I hope that by living with this knowledge, I might provide a shoulder for you, the giants of tomorrow, the shepherd. I solved it. I thought it was impossible, so I went away, did other things, and then all of a sudden the solution just came to me. I must have been thinking about it without knowing it. Nephthys 108. Seek out those in this world that would help you. Though only one of us can transcend, we will all share in both the burden and in the rewards. The Shepherd. Reconstruction of a puzzle from the Roman-themed testing area of the simulation, which Elohim referred to as the Land of Ruins. This is where the Founder began her journey. Okay, that... This is fun. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Not only that, it's a copy of an actual puzzle. <laughs> like a recording of the the sound. That's fun. Cool. All right. Reconstruction of a puzzle from the Egypt-themed testing area of the simulation, which Elohim referred to as the Land of Death. Fragments from the Book of the Scribe of Osiris found in this area inspired... The Blacksmith's A Dream of Aru, a classic work of Gehenna interactive fiction. Oh, well, my pleasure, Stephen. Glad to spread the joy of the first game, and uh, so far I'm absolutely loving the sequel. Ah! Even an Easter egg. A beach ball. That's funny. Uh, which one is this? Slightly elevated sigil. I even remember the puzzle names when I recognize them. That's just how fully familiar I've become with the first game. <laughs> now, of course, I'm also just compelled to wonder, um, because you got a star this way in the um, original game.
And I feel like they must remember, or they must know that people will remember that, but... Doesn't seem to actually derive any benefit from getting out of bounds. Although, I can bring a connector with me out into the rest of the museum. And the rest of New Jerusalem. That's kind of fun. Reconstruction of a puzzle from a testing area of the simulation themed around medieval imagery, which Elohim referred to as the Land of Faith. Scholars theorized that further areas with different themes existed at some point, but were destroyed by the gradual corruption of the simulation. This one is, um... Oh gosh, I can't remember the... I can't remember the name, but I remember the puzzle. You had to fire a laser out here to get a star. Obviously not this time. So the whole point of this one is that Open this. Right, there is one more connector. this directly, right? Yes, I can. And I can put this, like, here-ish. And then I don't actually need the other door open anymore. And I have this connector free and I should be able to get line of sight to the blue. There we go. Took me just a second to remember that one. comes with me. Oh no, I don't I don't want to do these. This room contains several Tetromino arrangers, a type of gating system used in the simulation. Elohim, in his function as a holistic integration manager, derived the significance of Tetrominoes from the Apocrypha of Saint Edwald. The founder sold dozens of these. Why don't you give it a try? Alright. Museum Explorer. Explore the museum of the simulation in its entirety. Alright, well... I'm a pretty firm believer in starting with the hardest one, so... wasn't that hard, it was just a lot of pieces. Or 
Or maybe I've just done a few too many of these in the, in the original game. Gotta be one of those. What? I had it! It was solved. What was the malfunction there? I don't understand. pretty hard. Siegmeyer hum from Dark Souls. Try and do anyway. Hmm. 
Keep getting close, 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 but not quite right. This one, thank you. <laughs> Got it, finally. Oh, that one was hard on me. Three more. Just inverted. Shoot. That'll do. Alright, hopefully these last couple are e actually easy. Come on, no achievement. <laughs> All good. All right, so there's the museum of the simulation. That was a fun first stop. I have a connector with me now. I intend to bring it with me. All right, so you want it? Okay. What can I do for you? Please come back if you need anything else. Gotta find a way to get more credits. Helga's Digital Wellbeing and Spiritual Tuning Emporium.
Alright, let me go back to the signs at the very beginning that showed me every landmark I could head for. Alright, straight was the museum of the simulation, so... I'm very inter- I'm actually more interested in these, so I want to go right first. To the Friends of New Jerusalem Gazebo and Gehenna Memorial, Memorial Pavilion. Hello. Friends of New Jerusalem Gazebo, Gehenna Memorial Pavilion. Gehenna Memorial Exhibition 312. Postponed in accordance with the new power management and distribution plan. Can I get in? Apparently not. Darn. Oh, I thought for sure there'd be a way in. Fine, alright. So let's head toward the Friends of New Jerusalem gazebo. That must be this over here. Friends of New Jerusalem gazebo. Oh. Speculating on the meaning of this Prometheus figure is premature until we can agree on its nature. You already have a theory. I know it's beyond any projection technology I'm aware of. If it wasn't us, it must be alien. It's possible. It's unlikely. Stay quiet. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. One key, we'd appreciate your thoughts on this. Now we've achieved the goal, fresh perspectives like yours will be increasingly hard to come by. I'd love to get a quote from you for this evening's newsletter. Speculation aside, 1K, is there anything we can know for sure about this Prometheus? It can't have come from the city. It's surely some kind of trick. It directed us to an island somewhere. It appeared to be human. Whatever it is, it came from inside the city. The only one of those that we actually know for sure is that it directed us to an island somewhere. That's undeniably true, and what does that tell us? We must treat its directions with suspicion. The sender of this message is obviously at that location. Neither of those are true. We may learn more by following its directions. I have no idea. We may learn more by following its directions. That was my conclusion as well. The apparition also appeared to be human. What can we assume from that? <clears throat> we can probably understand its meaning. We have no hope of understanding its meaning. The origin must also be human. I have no idea. I guess the origin would have to be human. In the broader, robot-encompassing definition of the term. Or we can pro but let's say we, we can probably understand its meaning. I tend to agree. I'm also sure that we lack the knowledge ourselves to create a projection of such clarity and magnitude. It must have been someone within the city. It couldn't possibly be someone within the city. The cause of the phenomenon is more technologically advanced than we are. Precisely. And that's something we can change. What makes you think it was a projection at all? How do we know it wasn't just a mass hallucination? I considered some kind of bug in our code, but if so, it would have to be shared by all of us. So, we're speculating again. Never. Relax. We've locked in the premises. I'd like hey. to hear 1K's best guess. I'd guess one of our kind is behind all this. I don't think one of us is behind all this. I'd rather not answer. I don't think one of us is behind all this. I think it's aliens, most likely. Perhaps some of our ancestors are still alive out there. I don't think it's real, I think it's in our heads somehow. Beyond that, I can't really say. Yeah. Can I quote you on that? 
Yes, I'm sure I'll be proved right. Yes, but it's just a theory. No, please don't. Yes, but it's just a theory. Theories are all we can reasonably have right now. Though I'm sure that won't come between Cryer and a sensational headline. Well, thanks all for hashing this out with me. Let's hope the mayor signs off on exploring this island. I only wish I could join the expedition. Why can't you join the expedition? If Melville's going, someone has to stay behind to keep the lights on. I'm not letting Pellegrino near the dam. I hope the next time we speak, we'll have a bit more data to go on. All right. Well, that was interesting. I'm sure that will have some level of consequence. Okay, let's head to the other side then. Okay, to the left we have Alexander Drennan Memorial, Tablets of the Founder, and Milton's Rest. May the Founder be with you. Tablets of the Founder. Fikla. Bless you, 1K. How lovely of you to come here, to the very spot where she established the teachings that led to your creation. Tell me more about the Founder. The Founder was born out of the trials of Elohim, an almost impossible test created by our distant ancestors. To pass these trials, she had to embody the most important virtues. She was smart and wise and humble. And through her perseverance, she resurrected humanity itself. With the help of the First Companions, she founded this city, which has given our species a chance at redemption. Who were the First Companions? They were the first to be born after the Founder. Two whose bodies had been anointed by our ancestors, and ten who were made whole by the Founder herself. They are the wisest of us. Though sadly, some were lost in the early days, before New Jerusalem was built. And some, I'm afraid, some seem to have rejected the Founder's teachings. What did the Founder teach? The Founder taught that humanity was destroyed by its hubris. Our ancestors thought they could play God, and treat this planet as something to dominate. They surrendered to a fever of growth and extraction until the planet finally punished them for it. That's why the Founder created the goal. So we would have something to strive for in her absence, but also a limit we must never pass. Why did the Founder leave? That's not for us to know. But I believe that one day she will return. It may not be long now. Perhaps after we finish the dome. It was supposed to be finished before completion day. Well, it doesn't matter. The Founder will return when she sees fit. I have to get going. Happy completion day, 1K. All right. Create 1,000 citizens, the ideal number of humans. Live in harmony with nature. Maintain balance in all things. Be respectful towards each other. Respect the traditions of our people. Be mindful of the mistakes of our ancestors. Be thankful to the progenitor, Alexandra Drennan. Be thankful to the keeper of memories, Arkady Chernyshevsky. Keep bright the memory of Gehenna and its people who found peace. Well, that's nice. Alright. 
two more exhibits out here, it looks like. Well, this would have to be the Alexander Drennan Memorial. Yep, Alexander Drennan Memorial. Jefferson. Oh, hello there. You must be the long-awaited 1K. Lovely day for a walk, is it not? Didn't you notice a titanic Greek man appearing in the sky? It is indeed. I was only just born, so I have no frame of reference. Oh, of course. One's first day in the city is always quite overwhelming. And today is a particularly unusual day. What is this place? The Alexandra Drennan Memorial. Are you interested in history? I think so. How wonderful. I'm not a full-fledged historian, but I do consider myself a bit of an aficionado. Which particular his bit which particular period of history are you most interested in? An excellent question. There's so many interesting events to choose from. Obviously, the period just before the end of biological humanity is interesting, and not only from the standpoint of it being the time when we were, in a manner of speaking, conceived, but also because our ancestors were, like ourselves, at a crossroads. How so? I don't want to put too much pressure on you, but you are the living embodiment of this historical moment. In you, the goal was accomplished. Our growth is finished, and we are complete. Or are we? I seem to have been born into an interesting time. That's not a burden I want to bear. Interesting, I have something to think about now. I seem to have been born into an interesting time. Indeed. The future is about to take shape, for good or ill. I suspect it will be exhilarating, but painful as well. Tell me about this sculpture. Well, where do I even start? This, my dear 1K, is someone who could very well be considered the mother of us all. A remarkable scientist by the name of Alexandra Drennan, also known as the Progenitor. Who was Alexandra Drennan? A long time ago, this planet was inhabited by our ancestors, a species of bipedal mammals with unusually large brains. When a particularly lethal virus threatened to wipe out civilization, it was Alexandra Drennan and her team that decided to create the program that would eventually result in the creation of our kind. Without her, you and I would not exist, and everything our ancestors had accomplished would be forgotten. Why do you admire her? By studying her writings and recordings, I have learned that Alexandra Drennan had immovable faith in humanity, in our ability to persevere, in our curiosity, our bravery, our kindness. While we might not share our ancestors' biological characteristics, I'd like to think that we have inherited those other qualities. And I admire Alexandra Drennan for keeping that faith, even when it must have, at times, been quite difficult. Amen. Why do we have a statue of her? To commemorate our past. Our beginnings. This entire garden is a celebration of where we came from. In part, so that we remember the mistakes of the past. And in part, so that we may draw strength from those that came before us. I should get going. Have a nice day. All right. The answer that came to me again and again was play. Every human society in recorded history has games. We don't just solve problems out of necessity. We do it for fun. Even as adults. Leave a human being alone with a knotted rope, and they will unravel it. Leave a human being alone with blocks, and they will build something. Games are part of what makes us human. 
We see the world as a mystery, a puzzle, because we've always been a species of problem solvers. Ah, oh, still so good. Okay, right, well, we're gonna listen to all of these. DNA is information transmitted across time. The living and the dead are part of the same chain, bound together by chemistry. That's true of all species. But humanity has taken this bond further. Thanks to technology, we have access to the thoughts and ideas of people whose physical bodies are long gone. Like you listening to me now. Even though I'm definitely dead at this point, you're part of that chain. You have the capacity. May the founder be with you. Aww. I didn't want her to be cut off. It's alright. Nearly everything on this planet, from the surface of the Earth to the composition of the atmosphere itself, has been shaped by life. It's a process that takes millions of years. But we humans, with our technology, with our understanding and manipulation of systems, have changed everything in just a few centuries. I think that's also part of what makes us human. We reshape the world in our image. It's how we create ourselves and how we destroy ourselves. When I was in ninth grade, my parents took me to Pompeii. At first, I was amazed by the feeling of walking through an ancient city. But then I suddenly got scared. I realized that I was walking through a real place where real people had lived. People like myself, with mothers and fathers and lives and hopes and dreams. And now it was all gone forever. I ran to my father, crying, and told him about this. And he said, I remember so clearly. He said, yes. But we are here. So long as there are people in the streets, the past isn't really gone. Uh oh, why is this one broken? Alright, I think that just leaves Milton's rest. And then it looks like we're ready to head back to the tower and go to the expedition. Archaeological Gardens. Oh wait, I didn't even see that sign. Humans invented complex magnification devices in order to better understand the component parts of the world they inhabited. This led to major discoveries in biology, physics, philosophy, and many other fields. Oh, it's a fork. A simple utensil used to transport nutrients to an ancient human's mouth, often found in conjunction with a knife and spoon. It's a book. A printed edition of the complete works of Stratton of Stagida, the materialist philosopher who defined the Talos Principle, edited by Athanasius T. Huber. Puzzle pieces. A jigsaw puzzle. Ancient humans derived meaning and enjoyment from problem-solving activities, as noted by the progenitor, Alexandra Drennan. While the item on display was created for small children, ancient humans of all ages voluntarily engaged in such activities. This one looks like a gun. An ancient human projectile weapon used in hunting, warfare, law enforcement, crime, and personal protection. Produced en masse and used around the world, on average, ancient humans killed hundreds of times the population of New Jerusalem per year. True. That is, a toothbrush. The ancient human mastication apparatus required frequent maintenance. This device is theorized to be an advanced electrical tool for this purpose, although some scholars maintain that its actual use was ritualistic and intended to mark the sunrise and sunset. I mean... Kind of both. <laughs> oh, this looks cool. Purple. Dude, it's you! You're 1K! So nice to meet you, dude. I saw you on the completion day stream. Hey, have you checked out all this ancient stuff? 
Yes, that's why I'm here. No, I was just passing through. What is a dude? What is a dude? Dude is an old human word that means an excellent person. And I like to use it because I think we should all be excellent to each other. I agree, purple. <laughs> I like you. Tell me about yourself. I'm almost as new as you are. I'm 998, so I've only been around for a year or so. I'm still trying to get the hang of this. It's pretty cool though, right? I mean, existence, it's totally gnarly. I'm not sure if I use that right. <laughs> so what do you think about the goal? I'm sure the founder knew what she was doing. I mean, our ancestors did sort of mess up, right? So we should probably take it easy with the expanding and stuff. Plus, did you see that trippy sky projection thing? That was some freaky stuff, man. Just seems safer to stay in the city. It's definitely better to be careful. Do you really think so? Sure I do. When I first left the birthing lab, I was <coughs> so overwhelmed that I hit in my quarters for three <coughs> weeks straight. Wow. And if I'm being honest, that's sort of where I want to be right now. Tell me about these human artifacts. They're pretty neat, huh? My favorite is that thing called a toilet. Our ancestors had to use it like three times a day to do a memory dump. <laughs> if they didn't, they freaking exploded. Imagine having to deal with that sort of anxiety all the time. Bummer, huh? <laughs> it, it is a bummer. <laughs> I tell you what. What do you think Prometheus is? Honestly, based on everything I know of ancient human culture, I think he's a ghost. There's no such thing as ghosts. Who knows, maybe you're right. There's no such thing as ghosts. I don't know, dude. If ghosts don't exist, why did they make so many movies about them? <laughs> Your diction is unusual. Yeah, dude. I thought this voice pack could give me a bit of confidence, help me stand out, you know? But I'm not sure it's working. I better be going. Right, before you go, dude, uh, maybe you can help me? I'm not sure I should keep this voice pack. Oh, you absolutely what should. Do you think? You're 1K, you're special. I'm happy to go with whatever you recommend. Stick with it, it's unique. Try a different voice pack, maybe. You have to learn to make your own choices. You're right, dude. You're absolutely right. I'm gonna do exactly what you told me to. <laughs> Excellent. Tell Purple what to do about his voice. Is that coins? Currency was an ancient human medium of exchange which played a significant role in their systems of labor and resource distribution. Intense conflicts sometimes erupted over the possession of these objects, leading to injuries or even deaths. Ha! Huh. An inflatable sphere used in the popular ancient human game known as football or soccer. This game was played around the entire globe and aroused great passion in its followers. It was also often simulated digitally, most notably in the form of Football Glory, 1994 CE. <laughs> well, hello. Belmarsh. Founder, bless you, friend. Who are you? The name I currently go by is Belmarsh. As to who I am, that changes and shifts, don't you find? Every person is an ongoing story, full of twists and turns and surprises. What are you doing here? I'm meditating, letting go of narratives like time and space and simply allowing the illusion that is my ego to merge with everything that surrounds it. That sounds like a beautiful experience of unity. That sounds like a horrific violation of the conscious self. That sounds like nonsense. I'm pretty into meditating, actually, so... It's not unity, but the absence of division. There was never a self or an other in the first place. Did you see what happened at the dam? Yes, I did, but I'm not particularly perturbed by it. Events occur, my friend, that's all. At the end of the day, we are all one. You, 
are the founder, and so am I, and Prometheus is just another story we are telling ourselves. Goodbye. All right. Hi, 1K. <laughs> A massage aid used by ancient humans to combat muscle fatigue and other physical ailments common to biological organisms. This prevented pain, the ancient human equivalent of error codes 704, 705, and 921 through 932. Toilet. A piece of sanitary hardware used to dispose of biological excretions resulting from food and water intake required to power ancient human biology. Such hardware was connected to a vast network of subterranean pipes leading to wastewater treatment facilities, a classic example of ancient infrastructure used to control their impact on the environment. The cat! Wait, I was promised I could pet the cat. Indeed I can, with a connector in my hand. Excellent. I'm going to pet the cat again. All right. 10 out of 10. Game of the year. Oh, it's you. Number 1000. Today is completion day, isn't it? Sorry, I turned off all the streams. Founder bless you, I guess. Are you all right? Not really, no. But I don't want to burden you with my problems on your special day. Go ahead, tell me what's wrong. You're as new to this world as it gets, 1K. What do you think might give you a sense of meaning? A sense that life is actually worth living? Oh my god. We're getting, he getting heavy fast. Contributing to society, pursuing my own self-interest, spirituality, obeying orders, love, a combination of factors. I have no idea. I mean, it, yeah, it's so many things. It's no one thing. That's probably correct. But I've tried a lot of different approaches, and there's always been something missing. Then where can meaning be found? Love, 1K. It's our only point of access to the divine. Our only way of transcending ourselves without losing what makes us unique. I'm absolutely certain, but... But what? But the right person for me hasn't been born yet. None of the people in this city are who I'm looking for, and if we really stop making new citizens, I'll be alone forever. Hmm. I don't think there's one specific person who's the only one we can love. Definitely true. Love isn't something you find out there, it's something you build with another person. Also think that's true. I don't think love is that important. Ridiculous. You deserve to find love, we all do. True. You need to learn to love yourself instead. Now that is also true, and in fact I think that's the most important one. That is the kind of self-important, smug nonsense our ancestors used to tell themselves. Self-improvement, self-empowerment, self, self, self. That's the attitude that cost them the world. It's not enough, 1K. It might be a start, but it's not enough. Thanks for the chat. I should get going. All right. One more time. Outstanding. Happy completion day, 1K. Alright, well that was the archaeological gardens. Still haven't found Milton's Rest just yet.
Where is it? Hi. This must be it. Milton's Rest. Ah, yes, here we go. Aha! Found her with the cat. Talk to a tall. Hello, 1K. Nice to meet you. What brings you to Milton's Rest? Just exploring. I seem to inherently like cats. It's funny how common that trait is. At first, I thought it might have been an error in the simulation, but it looks like it was the same for our ancestors. <laughs> Can you believe that there used to be hundreds of millions of cats on the planet? And people used to make videos of them and share them with the rest of humanity? Must have been incredible. <laughs> I wonder if they appreciated how good they had it. Tell me about this place. Well, this is the spot where the founder buried her first cat, Milton. She found Milton just after she woke up, and he lived with her and the first companions for almost 20 years. Aww. They say she was heartbroken when he died and swore that one day she would find the means to extend the lifespans of biological organisms. Is that possible? Probably, but we haven't really tried. It's not really considered part of the goal, you know. So, unfortunately, our cats still die pretty quickly. You fall in love with them, they become a part of your life, and then they're gone. That's why we built this place, to remember them. We should extend their lives. Seems cruel not to. Death is natural. We should accept it. I wanted to ask you about something else. Wow. I mean, I actually do believe this. I'm sorry, but why? I mean, it sounds profound, but is it really? Death is natural, so is disease, pain, extinction. That doesn't mean we just shrug and ignore it. If we love something, we protect it. Even if I do everything right, eventually I will watch every cat I love die of kidney failure. What's good about that? Putting aside fortune cookie platitudes, how can we look at suffering and death and declare it good? To be honest, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Death gives life more value. It teaches us to be less attached. What if there is an afterlife? I mean, I honestly think... Th this is part of it. It's incomplete, but... Does it, though? Or is that something our ancestors told themselves because they were afraid to die? Because I've lived longer than most ancients did, and I still have tons of things I'd like to do. And a cat. A cat can sleep and eat and play forever. Isn't that a beautiful thought? Can you really imagine living forever? Maybe you have a point. It is beautiful. Nature created limits for a reason. This, I believe, the limits are really, really important. Nature creates our ancestors. Our ancestors create us. We create immortality. It's all natural. Fair point. Honestly, I have no idea where I'm going with this. Maybe I'm wrong. I disagree. That is a fair point. <laughs> no, thanks. And sorry for getting so passionate. I know it's your first day. Let's talk about something else. Tell me about cats. They're incredibly odd creatures. I've had many, and no two are alike. They have strange habits, they do unexpected things, they have zero respect for anyone. They're the weirdos of the animal kingdom, basically. And despite that, or maybe because of it, they end up running your life. <laughs> I once didn't use my recharging station for almost 15 years because one of my cats liked to sleep in it. <laughs> What's your favorite cat fact? <laughs> I think the most amazing fact about cats is that they self-domesticated. Which is another way of saying that they're not properly domesticated at all. They just showed up one day and decided to start living with our ancestors. Then, after our ancestors died, they went back to living in the wild, and when we showed up, 
they moved right back into our homes. Dogs, meanwhile, turned back into wolves. They needed to change to survive. Cats just are. That actually makes a lot of sense. I was thinking to myself, why wouldn't they have dogs? Do you have a cat at the moment? Hmm. I do. Her name is Patricia. She's very beautiful and very specific in her preferences. She loves sunshine and sitting on people's heads. <laughs> And she has a psychotic hatred of flies. I, I don't mean that she tries to catch them like a normal cat. I mean she is furious at the mere fact of their existence. I should get going. All right. Milton, when everything changed, you made sure I wasn't alone. Dean, the nicest cat. Perhaps the only nice cat. Carlito. We did everything we could to save you. I hope there's an afterlife for cats. Castile. Half angel, half demon, all perfect. Damn damn. Truly a special creature. So glad I saved you. Gru Gru. A powerful cat and a good friend. I miss you and I'm sorry I couldn't find you again. Hassan. You were very gentle and beautiful and I wish nature had been kinder to you. The little man. I'm so sorry. I wish I could have protected you. The old lady, undoubtedly the most powerful demon on earth. Love you forever. Alright. Sam, is it a cat or a tank? The tiny. Quiet, kind, impossible to pick up, even with hands of steel. Mr. Cat, father of generations. Besamundo, no cat ever loved humans more than him. Would have been a perfect companion for Alexander Drennan. Iris. Your fluffy whiteness was like that of a cloud. Max, loved food so much he struggled with diarrhea. Eva, liked to play with laser beams. Frodo, could fit in any box no matter how small. Ivan, you raised us as much as we raised you. Oh, this is nice. Misha, the blackest cat, the devil's cat. Arya, alas, you've only ever sang for food. In loving memory of Biba, the originator of the pigeon slaying industry, and just a cat with impeccable taste in humans. Twiggy, she's napping in a better place now. Meggy, silly ball of energy, smarter than all of us, left too soon, left us too soon. Doni, fearless king, ruler of his domain, as big and hard as he was in volume. Gina, repeatedly killing things in the afterlife, but with love. Four more. Zira, destroyer of dreams. Katya, she was a very curious cat. Zuko, persistent door scratcher and lap warmer. Louis, we found you as a tiny street fighter and you grew up to be our best friend. Smart, fearless, and loving. Sausage, her beautiful gaze is upon me and her presence gives me comfort. Smetana, white as sour cream, soft as cottage cheese. Pierce, soaking in the desert sun. Danny, I didn't mind you eating my chips. Smudge, destroyer of strawberries, master of play, expert napper. Ginger, destroyer of carpets, devourer of food, connoisseur of cuddles. Pepper, spy in a former life, constantly monitoring all things from the shadows, expert arguer. Foxy, even the foxiest among us eventually have to face their hounds. Eyeball, Psyche, Psycho, she of many names, a nightmare and a soulmate to Jakar. If I lose all else, may I never forget her. Asriel, we rescued you, then you rescued us. Earl, beloved streamer and accomplished typist. <clears throat> Finn, a typical Leo, he liked attention, delicately wrapping his tail around his paws and sleeping in awkward positions. Legend, a wee boy who lived up to his name. Lily, thank you for getting your hair everywhere. Evie, beautiful on the outside only. Dipstick, he was a real cat if you know what I mean. Flux and void, in calm our love was filled, in play laughter abounded, in war the fragile shattered. Paddington, may you find many cuddles and carpets to pee on wherever you may be. Much love, K and S. Wharf, in different worlds but never apart, Best friends forever, a cosmic work of art. Lucy, 
You came to me, and ever since then, my life has been brighter. My number one. Norma Jean, your original father passed away, and I took you in. You were scared, but now I hope you're happy. Bitsy, you were taken from us too soon. I miss you more and more every day. Sweet dreams, baby. Dana and Fox, the truth is out there. Love you, Nenes. Dick Cheney, for a creature with so much fur, you were always trying to keep warm with your oversized hats. Cooper, the court jester of my heart. Chewy, music is supposed to soothe the savage beast, but you were different. Mister, your ability to relax was unparalleled. Dom, I was always so glad that you never grew into your ears. Stanley Biscuits, to the best neighbor I ever knew. Stanley Biscuits, I miss you every day. Kibber B. Wojtyshyn, here lies a cat who was devious. His cunning ways were quite mischievous, but we loved him all the same. Luna. Her name is Luna. She smells like tuna. Saffron and Cayenne. May you hunt forever. Arrow. Never stop screaming. Talina, my best friend, who has always been the sunshine of my life. Ripley and Smog. Sun sleepers. Moth hunters. Our favorite beasts. Sir, you were such a gentleman and I miss you dearly. Lilu, you were such a diva and always judged me with your stares. But you were a furry sweetheart underneath it all. Miss you, darling. Senya, the best magic sausage in the world. Can't wait to see you again someday. Jazzy and Gaia, to the most gentle and loving cats one could ask for. Jenny, did not like to be held by the unworthy. Alright. That's all the cats, and I think that's everything in the city. Looks like it. There doesn't seem to be anything out here. I'm gonna look around, of course, because this is me we're talking about. But... Okay, a lone wonder. You said I missed somebody hidden at the scaffolding. Is that over here? Yes. Very good, very good. Hello, Ren. 1K, you straight far. Well, that gives me a chance to apologize for completion day not being entirely complete. You mean the dome? Yes, it's my responsibility. I'm the chief architect. It was supposed to be done in time for completion day, but we simply didn't have enough resources. What's the dome for? It has two purposes. To protect New Jerusalem from the world, and to protect the world from New Jerusalem. When is the dome going to be complete? At this rate? I'm not sure. Maybe another decade or two. Does the world really need protecting from New Jerusalem? That's what the Founder taught us. One city may not seem like much, but just look at the dead city and how it transformed the environment. The consequences are still with us even more than a thousand years later. I'm interested in the dead city. I wonder if we get to go there. Doesn't building this huge dome consume too many resources? Seems antithetical to the goal. You're right. I have heard that argument. But the way it's been explained to me is that the dome has a greater value than just its practical use. It's a symbol of the society we aspire to become. I need to go. All right. That seems like everything. Yeah, because we've been there. All right. Time to head for the expedition.
<coughs> I'm sorry, excuse me. Well, I enjoyed all that very much. Well, New Jerusalem's very nice, but it obviously has its problems already. Happy completion day, 1K. All right, off we go. <coughs> Yeah, I know. I realized halfway over and I didn't really feel like going back for it because I'm certain it's not going to let me carry it from here out to the island. Oh yes, there's the dead city. Have we decided what city we think it is? Because I feel like the giant, I feel like the big dam it, it always felt to me like it was probably the Hoover Dam, which would make that Vegas, but it does not look like Vegas out there, so I'm not sure where we are, honestly. Alright, fam. Melville, hello. So, what's the verdict? Are we going? Yes, this is an opportunity we can't pass up. I guess Byron was pretty convincing, hmm? Well, we'll see. I just wonder how much of the city is gonna fall apart while I'm gone. Actually, we haven't been formally introduced. I'm Melville, New Jerusalem's only decent engineer. Saved you from the elevator. Nice to meet you. People call me 1K. I'll let you know when I need an oil change. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. Now let's get this show on the road. You ready to go? Yes. Wanderers, embark on the expedition. Here we go. Hold on to your hats. We really need to update those language libraries. Thank you for coming along, everyone. We have a chance to make a real difference here. It's not just about what we find on that island. It's about who we want to be. There's the dam. As a dam. people, as a civilization. To remind ourselves that we used to be wanderers, explorers. We used to yearn for distant shores and dream of building new cities. Let's see if we can rekindle that flame a little. All right, this is going to be a long journey. So I would like to ask you to switch to sleep mode to conserve power until we arrive at the island. Nighty night. Sleep mode activated. Oh yeah. They told me you I'd hear it. have chosen a dangerous path. A path that will demand sacrifice. But that, my child, is how the future is built. Wakey-wakey, robot people. Say goodbye to Elohim, and say hello to the mysterious island. All right. Okay, status report, please. We hit some headwinds over the ocean, so fuel consumption turned out a bit higher than expected, but we should be okay. We're approaching the center of the island now. This should be the location of the largest of the artificial structures we detected. How large are we talking? Do we have precise measurements? It should be coming into view just about... Whoa. <laughs> it's big. You can say that again. That is a bloody mega structure. <laughs> if I had a spine, it'd be shivering. Ha! I <laughs> knew this would be exciting. <laughs> Yakut! Or Find us a place to set down. <laughs> On it. Yeah. It really is incredible.
Remember to turn on streaming, everyone. Streaming initiated. Have I ever mentioned that I hate flying? If our creators had intended us to fly, they'd have given us jetpacks. Ha. And touchdown. Act one, a voice in the wilderness. All right, everybody. I'm sure you're all just as excited as I am, but let's at least have some semblance of order. Wow. Okay. Um, a couple of things. I need to take the dog out for her evening potty. Maybe that's why she's borking so much. She's upset because it's already 40 minutes late. I usually take her out right at eight. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to grab a drink, fix myself a snack, and then I will be back to pick up at act one. So BRB everyone.
Alrighty, folks, I am back. We are ready to go. He says as his phone immediately starts pinging him again. <clears throat> yeah, that was a lot of talking. <laughs> My voice is a little scratchy. Need to get some water. All right. All right, back to it. Uh, Yakut, I want a map of the island and a molecular analysis of, well, everything. Melville, tell me what the giant pyramid does. The rest of us will start exploring. Shouldn't the expedition leader stay at the VTOL? Why do you <coughs> hate fun, Al? I don't hate fun. I'm just mildly suspicious of it. Excellent. Then we can all go. Hmm. This underground structure seems to be part of some kind of transport system. No power, though. I'm not making any promises, but I might be able to fix the transport system. However, I don't like just randomly poking at things. That's how you get electrocuted. So please check the surrounding structures to see if you can find anything that might help me make sense of this stuff. Schematics, blueprints, a manual would be great. Find schematics and explore the area for our objectives. Okay, so Yakut is presumably generating a map. Here's Byron. Wow. Pretty, pretty solid wow moment. Hey, 1K, check out these coordinates. the transport system. We still need to get online. God, the soundtrack is beautiful. special, right? You know what would be special? An explanation. So, I made reference to this in the demo, but I'll do it again, because you can see on the Golden Gates, whoever built it is keenly aware of our human's history. Because this is Athena inside the simulation. This is her awakening the rest with her teachings. This is them building New Jerusalem. And there's New Jerusalem with what I now know to be, you know, the buildings inside it. And the owl is interesting because that's a throwback to the Athena novel from the first game. That's where Yakut told me to go, right? No, not yet. Ah, 
that's where he told me to go. Alright, let's derail over here first. Everywhere we can derail, we shall derail. Wow. That sort of looks like a temple. New interface content available. This looks like something out of Mist or Riven. Yakut, Astronomical Temple. A weird building near our base camp. I wasn't entirely sure what to call this. It looks like a temple and sort of astronomy themed. Maybe I'm reading too much into it, I do that. It doesn't seem to be active in any way, but I can't help but think that the design implies some kind of significance, like it's hiding a secret. But again, maybe my imagination is getting the better of me. Of course it's hiding a secret! Ours is to figure out what the fuck the secret is. I have a feeling the answers are not going to be immediately apparent here in the temple, however. Alright, anything back here? Looks like, ultimately, no. Alright. I will go where I was told to go. This seems different from the other structures. Older. Have a look around, 1K. Investigate the structure. Oh, wow, yeah. Whoa, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Save that for last. There's a generator. It's running. Looks like they were running some sort of experiment here. Download the schematics. Wow. Okay. It's going to happen. Oh good, okay. Yeah, it's a terminal, isn't it? Talos Principle 2A. Name on the universe, author, Stratton of Stagiara. Location HAR1. On the Universe, a fragment from Stratton's On the Universe. Amentus, I grant you then that man is indeed like Talos and cannot escape his material nature despite the claims of metaphysics, for, as you have many times said, footnotes, for, the use of the term metaphysics in this context is likely an error introduced in the Trebizond manuscript. The fragmentary Heracleion manuscript controversially uses superstitions instead. Nicomachus. Too many, perhaps. Stratton. Repetition is the mother of teaching, at least when the students are hard-headed. Amentus. But what does this tell us about the nature of the universe, which is what we were discussing? Stratton. That is the next question we must undertake to answer. We begin with the self, because that is what determines our existence as individuals. But the self cannot exist without that which surrounds it. The citizen lives within the city, and the city lives within the cosmos. So now we must apply the principle we have discovered to the wider world and ask, if man is like a machine, could it be that the universe is similar in nature? And if so, what follows from that fact? Excellent questions. Noema Project 1. Progress Notes. Author 5358. Trials 1 to 3. Version 0 0.01 successfully deployed. Input output consistent. Trials 3 to 4 insufficient. Trials 5 to 6. Version 0 0.02 testing failed. Power grid to unstable. Schematic 5358. Sending to Melville. 
Thanks, one case. Done. Let's see what we've got here. The file format is the same one we use in New Jerusalem, although some parts aren't loading correctly. And it crashed. Hold on. Here we go. Okay. You know what? I'll hack together a solution for the transport system. Return to the station. Aha! Uh -huh. <clears throat> That's where we spend our stars. I recognize that symbol from the demo. Alright. One way or another, that temple is where we spend the stars. Got it. thing just materialize out of thin air. Melville, I want an analysis of that particle cloud. On it. Anyone got a butterfly net? Hmm. I'm not gonna be able to get to it, am I? through that golden gate. That was wild, though. Board the capsule. Connecting the transport system to our interface. Hold on. Mm hmm. Grasslands Ring, an artificial ring like structure on the east on the wide lowlands east of our base camp. Eight main puzzles, two lost puzzles, one gold puzzle, one lost lab, and two stars. Travel to East One. Why not? Let's do it. Where is the capsule taking 1K? To that enclosed area in the eastern lowlands. I put all the information we have on the map screen. Check out your interface. Thanks. Sorry. My bad. We'll catch up with you soon, 1K. is magnificent. Look at that tower. I wonder what it's for. Explore the area. Okay, so this... This was in the demo. <clears throat> so we're back in familiar territory, although now I will presumably have access to the lost puzzles and the lost labs and the other things that were gated out of the demo. puzzles. I think I had to solve it. Right, I'm corralled until I solve the first two. Is that a puzzle? RGB Why would there shifter. be a puzzle? 
Oh, they didn't Let's solve it and find out. They didn't have the dialogue. One K, go ahead. I have a reoccurring nightmare just like this. That device was not in the simulation. Puzzle. Skadoosh. Whoa, I'm reading an enormous energy spike. It's another particle cloud. It's headed for the lake. Mm -hmm. I think the cloud's been absorbed by some sort of device. Fascinating. Melva? Yeah, yeah. I'll add it to the pile of weird stuff. Ha! Ah. I love the music. Reconnection. So this is a red, so I need a blue and a green. I can do the blue directly. In order to get a green, I need a red and a blue. And so now I can do a blue and a green. <clears throat> and voila! Interface. Huh. Social media. What's 1K like? Hey, I'm curious. Has anyone actually met 1K? By the founder's pistons, I hope he's interested in mechanical engineering or something. We desperately need more people to keep this city functional, so we don't have to rely on Melville to repair the stuff that Pellegrino fixes. Hey! Remember when you fixed the door to the mayor's office? How long was Herman stuck in there? You trap one mayor in his office for a week, and you're marked for life. I hope he's an artist. What we really need is new stories, new ideas to lift our spirits. You know, if we just kept growing, we wouldn't have to worry about this, and we wouldn't have to imprison poor 1K in a cage of expectations. 1K will be whatever the progenitor intended him to be, and whatever the founder foresaw when she established the goal. <clears throat> he's polite and really interested in history, which is an excellent start. I'm not going to name names, but some of you were a lot less impressive. <laughs> I don't know who I want to be, still deciding. I want to explore. I don't see a contradiction between engineering and art. I'm sure the Founder's intent will reveal itself in time. I will find my own path. Let's see. No. Yes, 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 yes. I'll go with this one. You're right, of course, it's a false dichotomy. There's no need to feel pressured, 1K, I was just curious. But without power and resources, there's no art. Just saying. <laughs> Touché. Alright. Solve puzzles. I've been playing around Two with a machine that absorbs the particle clouds. 
As far as I can tell, it uses the energy of the particles to build giant tetrominoes? Excuse me? It's another puzzle. Collect enough energy, build a bridge, access the tower. I think. What is this, a theme park? Maybe it's an experiment. A rat maze. It seems like an echo of the simulation. Not a deliberate recreation, but built around the same core principles. Let's not jump to conclusions, though. What's clear is that this place was meant to be explored. So let's do that. Fuck yeah, Byron. New interface content available. Yakut bridge ring, a device that builds a, tr uh, that builds a tetromino bridge. I'm not sure what to call this. Bridge ring? Bridge machine? Anyway, it's a device that takes particle clouds released by the puzzles and turns them into bridges made out of tetrominoes. Correctly assembling a bridge out of eight particle clouds is required to reach the tower, so clearly another layer of puzzles. The simulation had tetromino puzzles too, although in a different form. Could their presence here be symbolic? I don't have a clue. Yeah, oh, it's, it's incredible. It's such a good sequel already. What up, Yakut? Hey, 1K, what's up? Tell me about yourself. I don't know if there's much to tell. I'm not that interesting. I'm just a member of the scavenging team. Well, senior member, lead scavenger, I guess. There's not that many of us left, to be honest, and Garrus doesn't get along with the mayor. What else? Uh, I have a cat named Bruce. I like old music. Um, I have a class of antique <coughs> bottles. I think that's it. <laughs> Why did you become a scavenger? I've always loved exploration. Seeing new places, that feeling that you're the first person to set foot somewhere after all this time. But you know, it, it's, it's not even that. It's just seeing new things. The world is full <coughs> of remarkable sights and experiencing them changes you. It's not the same as just reading about it. I agree, discovering the world enriches our lives. I think true change only comes through introspection. I mean, I don't think it has to be one or the other. I definitely think discovering the world enriches our lives though. Exactly. Every time I go on another mission, I find something that surprises me, that extends my horizons in ways I couldn't have anticipated. The world is so much bigger than we are. It contains things that we can't even imagine. And if we limit ourselves to our own minds, we'll never grow. Tell me about Bruce. He's five years old, half goofball, half psychopath, loves sticking his head into things, chews cables, Pees on electrical stuff. Melville banned him from her workshop, but he loves visiting her and peeing on her equipment. Huh. Why do you collect bottles? I just find it fascinating that these fragile objects have survived for so long. Plus, they're kind of pretty. Do you want to solve some of these puzzles? Oh, no. Please. No puzzles. I'm so bad at puzzles. I barely got out of the booting process. Elohim thought I might be defective. What's the farthest you've ever been from New Jerusalem? It might be this. Although there was an expedition to a superconductor storage facility up north, incredibly well preserved, but the logistics were an absolute nightmare. Now that I think about it, there might be some of that in you. Have you ever seen anything like the megastructure in your travels? Our ancestors built some pretty amazing things. Huge cities, factories, mines, monuments to their history, but nothing quite like this, no. That's all. All right. All right, we're off the leash now. I remember a few things from the demo that I'm just going to go ahead and do right quick. First, I remember there's like the, uh, the Prometheus spark way over here. Wow.
Like, they have just... They have perfectly captured my curiosity and interest. Like, I need to know what is inside that tower. Oh, thanks, Lone Wonder. What key is it? I didn't notice there was a toggle run option. I appreciate you flagging that. So in the demo, I was able to do it just out the gate. Maybe I still can. Uh, it depends how many pieces the little bridge puzzle actually requires. I need one more to finish that. Okay. Well, in the meantime... Let me start exploring these other question marks. Ah, it's underneath me. That's right. I remember, I remember, I remember, okay. I think I remember where the stars were, too, so... Although, you only did the first four main puzzles in the demo, so... Half of them... Half of the main puzzles will also be new to me. Alright, let's continue chasing that spark thing later. There was something down here as well, though, as I recall. Interesting monument. Decorative for another puzzle. Right. Find my sprite and follow it until it leads you back to me. Yeah, like the historical artifact snapshotting thing that you can do. There's like a bicycle back here. Discovery. Find an ancient human artifact. Tricycle, a very small vehicle with three wheels. A strange bicycle with three wheels, perhaps intended for children or pets. Be right back. Just changing out my food. it. 
And then up here, we were not able to explore them in the demo, but one of the lost labs is up here on the right. Yeah, I remember that too. I don't know. Did you see a glitch? If you did, it's probably actually a glitch and not supposed to be in-universe. Although, I suppose I don't know either. Yes. This is very similar to the structure where you found the schematics. Check out the terminals. Maybe there's something that'll help us understand who built this place. They have to have left something behind. Four point two kill a year event. Name the four point two kill a year eridification event. Author B T Odiambo. Location Vala One. The four point two kill a year eridification event. From B.T. Odiambo's Anthropocene Dilemmas. The Akkadian Empire, forged in violence by Sargon the Great and his sons, reigned supreme over the city states of Old Sumer. Enriched by trade with distant lands, fed by the plentiful wheat fields of Mesopotamia, the empire bestrode the world with confidence and pride. Who could oppose the chosen of Anu and Enlil, the masters of the four corners of the world? Then the weather changed, the crops stopped growing, trade collapsed. The Empire fell, its capital forgotten. The most likely culprit at the time of writing is the 4.2 kilo year eridification event, the beginning of the Megalean Age, a non-anthropogenic drought that may have lasted almost two centuries, causing many of the earliest civilizations around the planet to collapse. This is where our ordinary understanding of time, measured on the small scales of human history, collides with the reality of deep time and our existence within a much bigger picture. We live on a changing planet in a changing universe. Climatic optimums are temporary. Extinction is the norm. The Akkadians, like the more egalitarian inhabitants of the Indus Valley civilization, could not understand why the rivers dried out and the rains stopped coming. Even if they could, they lacked the tools to do something about it. A few short millennia later, we are on the brink of having that understanding and those tools. What can we learn from the tragedies of the past? Error 5358. One such drought, completely naturogenic, would be enough to wipe out New Jerusalem for good. Alright, so some some of us have been here before and have read these things and commented on them. First Companions. Name the First Companions. Author, Error. Location, Vala 1. The First Companions from, but... When the Founder awoke, leaving the garden behind forever, there were two more whose bodies had been anointed by the Progenitor. The gold disc breathed life into them, and their names were Eustathius and Cornelius. The founder showed them all she had discovered. <clears throat> Together they explored the dead city, and saw the ruin to which humankind had fallen. It was then that the founder understood that the sins of the past must not be repeated, and that only through humility could the future be saved. Aside from Cornelius and Eustathius, there were ten whose bodies the progenitor had not anointed in due time. Now it was upon the Founder to complete this work and begin the resurrection. In this matter Cornelius proved of great assistance. After many tribulations, the ten were brought to life, and these twelve that were born after the Founder are called the First Companions. These are their names, Eustathius, two, Cornelius, three, Aurora, four, Sun, five, Sarabai, six, Byron, seven, Melampus, eight, Yemo, nine, Hypatia, ten, Niam, eleven, Benaroya, 12, and Lifthrasir, 13. It's funny how you can take something that's 90% true and 10% false and create something that's 100% misleading. Failed to load profile. Noema Project 2. Progress Notes. Trials 7 through 21. Base camp established. Version 0 0.02 successfully deployed. Tested core functionality. So far, so good. Trials 22 to 107, version 0.03 successfully deployed. 
Better cooling systems necessary. Trial 108, version 0 0.04 failed. Unknown error in calculations. Mm-hmm. do anything with those or not. Alright. That was certainly interesting. Frogs, Lone Wonder! I'm lifting the ban. You tell me, are frogs people? Oh, hey, buddy. Alcatraz. What can I do for you, 1K? Tell me about yourself. Me? Well, uh, I was born when New Jerusalem was a lot smaller than it is now. And there was a lot of work to do. I wasn't really interested in technical stuff, engineering and so on, but I was good at keeping things organized. So I got involved with the administration side of things. Uh, making sure the scavenging teams focused on the right materials, uh, keeping track of our energy usage, that sort of thing. I think we've accomplished what the Founder wanted us to, and I'm proud that I helped make that happen. Byron doesn't see it that way, obviously, but I think sometimes he gets so lost in his dreams that he forgets to look at the real world. Do you consider Byron a friend? Of course. My best friend, in fact, and someone I've worked with hundreds of times over the centuries. A good person who cares about the world and the people in it. I just also think he's wrong about everything and extremely annoying. <laughs> I like that you can disagree and still be friends. The Founder taught us that we must never lose track of other people's humanity, even if they disagree with us. We're all in this together, even that's, if we can't always see eye to eye. That's completely true. What do you think about the megastructure? I... don't know. It's obviously impressive, but I think we should be very careful. We're dealing with powers we don't really understand. What do you think about that lab I found? I think the only reason to build a lab in so remote a location is because you're trying to hide what you're doing. Or because what you're doing is dangerous. What does the goal mean to you? To me, it means accepting a certain amount of humility. Our ancestors thought they could master the world with no regard for any other organisms. They failed to see themselves as part of a greater whole. I think the Founder realized where they went wrong and tried to offer us a different path. A path where we have a place in this world, but the world is not ours. What could these puzzles mean? Well, puzzles, or uh, trials, as Elohim calls them, were used as part of the process that created the Founder. And they're still part of how we're born. They symbolize the human ability to understand the world and solve problems. But nowadays, they don't have a practical application. Uh, they are a common motif in the arts, though. The only physically existing puzzles I can think of are in the Museum of the Simulation. So to answer your question, no idea. Fair enough. That's all. Right, here's Stratton. Whether it is true that Daedalus constructed the giant Talos, or as others say, he was the creation of Hephaestus, all we may be certain of is that he was made of bronze and had but one vein, within which flowed a liquid substance like blood. 
which some claim was quicksilver, and others assert was ichor, such as flows in the veins of the gods. The loss of that liquid caused him to die, as a man dies when he loses his blood. May we not then say that Talos, though created as a machine or a toy, had all the essential properties of a man? He moved of his own volition. He spoke and could be spoken to, had wishes and desires. Indeed, in the tale of the Argonauts, that was the cause of his downfall. If then a machine may have all the properties of a man, and act as a man while driven only by the ingenious plan of its construction and the interaction of its materials according to the principles of nature, then does it not follow that man may also be seen as a machine? This contradicts all the schools of metaphysics. Yet even the most faithful philosopher cannot live without his blood. Spitting facts, Stratton. <clears throat> I think... Oh, this is a lost puzzle. It's strange that some of these puzzles seem disconnected from the rest. Like it's all unfinished or still evolving yeah good lost puzzles some puzzles seem disconnected from the rest <clears throat> some of the puzzles seem to be disconnected from the rest they're still functional and can be used to power the bridge device which means it should be possible to reach the tower without solving every main puzzle but they don't seem to be properly integrated could they be remnants from a previous iteration of the design This is a straight up connector. So I need a green and a red. Red's easy. I'm line of sight right to it. This is harder. of sight on a blue. Which still doesn't actually help me. Green. 
But if I try to do... Hmm. Gotta think about this for a second. can't make this blue. Because what I'm thinking is, if I can get this self-sustaining, like through here, I'm just not sure how I do it. find a way to keep that open, I'd be in business. That's right. I'm doing something wrong. I'm just gonna sit here and think about this for a second. <clears throat> the receiver at the end is blue. So I think all I need to do is manage to get the RGB converter to be holding the gate open, making it a blue reference point that I can then use the connector through to get around to the back hallway. With the box on the pressure plate. The question is, how do I manage that? How do I manage to set that up? It's the only way I get access to the green source in the first place is to have the blue connector very specifically over here. But that means Quite though. Maybe I just need to reverse my direction on that. Yeah, 
Yeah, this will do it. Boom, baby. Got it. Okay. Yay, lost puzzle solved. Keep solving these, 1K. Let's see where it leads. Notes on the puzzles present on the island. It seems that each of the structures on the island, with the exception of the megastructure itself, is surrounded by a cluster of puzzles resembling those found in the simulation and in our booting sequence. Completing a puzzle releases a particle cloud, which then autonomously flies into the device that assembles tetrominoes. The puzzles even come with titles, hijacking the vestigial code designed to display puzzle names in the simulation. It's unclear whether this represents a potential security issue, but the matter should be given consideration. Okay, so they're just like bonus alternative puzzles. I ran the samples I collected so far. The soil sample results are in line with what would be expected in this type of environment. The samples from the above ground structures though, I tried dating them, but the results just don't make sense. None of the typical molecular markers are present. These walls could have been made 10,000 years ago or yesterday. I could try to estimate an age based on erosion and plant growth, but I'm not sure that would make sense given how weird everything else is. Good work, Yakut. Keep at it. Indeed. How am I doing? Two stars, one more lost puzzle. Six main puzzles, and the gold puzzle. Yes, thank you. I was say, isn't there another old artifact back here. There's Fox. Hmm. Yeah, there it is. An ancient mechanism of unknown functionality. It's an unknown machine. It's impossible to reconstruct the purpose of this device. I don't know if it's impossible, 1K. Impossible's a hell of a word. Main six, I'll hold off on that. Main seven. Hey, Byron. Tell me. What did you make of New Jerusalem? It's bigger than I thought it would be. It's lovely. It feels like a museum. It's beautiful, but decaying. It's falling apart, man. It's fantastic. Self-contained, self-sufficient, everything is so harmonious. This is... This is what I'd say. It's beautiful, but decaying. You're right. You're absolutely right. We had such ambitions in the beginning. But now it's all turned inwards. We've lost faith in ourselves, in our humanity. All we need to do now is finish that dome, and we'll be trapped. 
in our perfectly neat little tomb. I wanted to ask you a question. Of course, ask away. Tell me about yourself. I'm someone who was born a long time ago, when we couldn't afford to romanticize the past and demonize progress, when the value of human civilization was evident because it was so close to being gone. I'm someone who believes that human beings are important, terribly, desperately important, because intelligent life is rare and precious. I suppose you could say I'm old-fashioned. What's the role of puzzles in our culture? When Alexandra Drennan was trying to find a way of creating true AI, she stumbled upon the idea that curiosity and playfulness are core characteristics of intelligence. So she built the simulation around a game because playing is part of what makes us human. We also retain some of that code, as I'm sure you noticed when you were booting up. Because of that, <coughs> puzzles have always been important <coughs> to our culture. To me, they represent the idea that the application of reason can lead us forward. None of which explains why these puzzles are here or who built them, but I think it shows that there must be some kind of intent behind them, perhaps a test. What do you think about the megastructure? It's a mystery. Not just because it's technologically far ahead of us, but because we genuinely don't understand its purpose. And I think that's wonderful. It's just what we needed as a civilization. You and Alcatraz seem to have an odd friendship. Because we disagree on just about everything, you mean? Well, here's the secret. Al is honest. He believes what he believes because it seems right to him, not because it gives him power over others. I respect that. In fact, I prefer that to someone who agrees with me just because I'm one of the first companions. That's all. I remember there were terminals around here somewhere. What I'm currently looking for. Yeah, here's one. All right. The word endures. Explore content on a lost terminal. Achievement. Trevor. The Life of Trevor, author 5358. Trevor Percival Donovan, known to his friends simply as Trev, never as Percy, was part of the extended lifespan project that formed the backbone of the simulation in the archive. He helped put together the hardware that made all of this possible. Like Alexandra Drennan, he left behind a series of messages to the future. But unlike Alexandra Drennan or Arkady Chernyshevsky, he was forgotten. Not one building or street in New Jerusalem is named after him. I dug up his files from the archive, and I've been thinking about them a lot. Trevor won. So I heard that Alexandra is recording these time capsules for... You? Out there, I guess? Robot people of the future! Hi. And I thought to myself, surely they'll want to hear more than the wisdom and insight of a brilliant scientist like Alexandra Drennan. Surely, they also want to know what I was thinking, a dumbass hardware engineer from Staten Island. Tell us about your insights, Trevor. Why did you spend your last months on Earth helping a crazy old Russian guy build the world's biggest backup drive? Well, let me tell you my story. When I was, Yeah! Yeah, yes! Frank! I'm recording right now! Uh-huh. No. Y you know what? Why don't you go f All right. Yeah, here's another one. Founding One. Name, Hypatia's Journal Number One. From Hypatia's Journals, Volume One, The Founding of New Jerusalem, Day One. We finally set out from the dam today. The site that Athena and Cornelius picked for the city isn't far, but the vegetation makes the going difficult. 
We found the secondary supply site easily enough, thanks to Alexandra Drennan's instructions, but while I still have to compile a detailed inventory, it seems that many of the more complex materials are in bad shape. They must have expected the simulation to fulfill its purpose a lot sooner, but then they probably expected all twelve of us to be there from day one, not just Athena. Tonight we have to use the two recharging pods that we brought from the dam in four-hour shifts, which is just as well. There's no telling what sort of critters are hiding in the undergrowth, and most of them will have to learn that our kind isn't edible. Baby Steps From the introduction to Are We There Yet? Where We Came From, Where We're Going, and Why You'll Need Snacks by Valerie Contera Romero Sometimes people point at the last few hundred or thousand years of human history and say, Look at how ugly it all is. Look at what a mess we've made. Maybe modernity was a bad idea. Maybe we should stick to living like cavemen. And I get it. It is ugly and messy. But the mistake is thinking that where we are right now is the end point, that this is the adulthood of the human species. I mean, try to apply what you know about human development to human history. Think about babies. Babies are ugly. Admit it, we all know it, they look like tiny old people covered in mucus. They have soft heads, and they grow into children, tiny sociopaths with underdeveloped brains. And then they become teenagers, pimply, self-righteous lunatics driven by hormones. And then slowly, if you're lucky, they gradually become adults. The development of the human individual is always ugly and messy, but that's the point. It's development towards something. The same applies to humanity as a whole. On a geological scale, we've barely just come into, come into existence. We've gotten through the baby phase, just about survived our childhood, but we're barely teenagers. Stopping here would be disastrous and a betrayal of everything that we could still become. We may feel the weight of history on our shoulders, but this is just the prologue. To put it in pop culture terms, we haven't even made it out of the tutorial yet. Just because it's all pimples and hormones and frustration right now doesn't mean it's never going to change. Oh, hi, Aaron. Thank you so much. Uh, we've only we've only heard the snippets of your voice from the memorial in New Jerusalem, but I'm looking forward to whenever we invariably hear you as Athena. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, I am really, really loving the sequel so far. It's fantastic. Dead City. Author Elwyn, from Considerations of Beginnings and Endings, by Elwyn258. I think all that time Athena spent in the Dead City changed her. I don't think she had conceived of the goal before. I think she believed fully in the naively optimistic ideas of Alexandra Drennan. But walking through those ruins is a visceral experience, and she spent a great deal of time there looking for resources. It's the sheer amount of death that gets to me. How many animals our ancestors killed, many to the point of extinction, entire species eradicated, sometimes for the most superficial reasons. Whenever humans arrived somewhere, death would follow. And then the great blowback, the deaths of billions of thinking beings, the extinction of humanity itself. It's too horrific to truly imagine, but I suspect the Founder spent a great deal of time doing just that. That's when she must have realized that there was no way back to the growth-obsessed, all-consuming civilization of the past. Alright. I'm gonna go ahead and solve main three while I'm here. And then uh, main four is involved in getting the star, as I recall. Or one of the stars. This is the Prometheus Spark. The Spark! Find one Prometheus Spark. That's the thing that lets you skip puzzles. Castling. This one is just a pressure plate. How do 
I get a green and a blue? That, of course. It is gorgeous, Aaron. Nice. Private message? Dope. Permission to share your personal data. Dog 6661K, we met in New Jerusalem, if you remember. I spoke to my friends. This whole mysterious island expedition thing has the city a bit on edge. They have some questions for you before I make any introductions. Do you consent to my gathering and sharing your personal data? I consent. Wait, what am I signing up to? I do not consent. Look, my friends just want some assurance that you're the right kind of person. If you want to know what's really going on, you'll have to play along. You can back out at any time, but if you don't engage with the process, then, well, you won't get to engage with the process. At all. It's up to you. What if by consenting I miss out on something else? I'll give you some advice, newbie. When your choices matter in this world, you'll know about it. It's somehow built in. When you face a dilemma and both options look good, then for sure you'll miss out something. But trust your gut and you can't go wrong. This right now is not one of those dilemmas. You should come along for this ride. That's my advice. I consent. Good choice. There's six questions. Standard vetting procedure will get the best results if you answer in whatever way is most true to you. Question one. Which is more important for making good decisions, compassion or knowledge? Compassion, knowledge, I don't know. I reject the terms of the question. <sighs> I mean, they're both very important, but I think knowledge is a little more important. <laughs> Thank you. Question two. Is it ever okay to lie or misdirect in order to keep a secret? Yes, lying can be okay. No, lying is never okay. I reject the terms of the question. I don't know. Yes, lying can be okay. I see. My friends will be most interested in this particular answer. Question three. When people do wrong, do they deserve to be punished for it beyond what is necessary for our own protection? Yes, bad behavior deserves to be punished. No, no one deserves to suffer unnecessarily. Phew, that one's controversial. I'm glad it's not me that has to answer these. Question four. Now it gets metaphysical. In your opinion, can the world be reduced to mechanical parts? Or is existence just weirder than we'll ever really know? The universe is reducible to universal basic laws. The universe is, is weird, we'll never fully understand it. It's both, it's neither. I do think, ultimately, it's uh, reducible. Alright, Aaron. Well, much appreciated. Thank you for stopping in and saying hello. I'm really enjoying it. Thank you, thank you for your work on both games. <clears throat> The universe is reducible to universal basic laws. Well, I'm glad you understood that question, because it's all Greek to me. Question 5. Can things really change for the better, for good, or do good times and bad just come around in cycles? Eventually, change for the better is always followed by change for the worse. 
I mean, I do think bad times are inevitable, but I also think that we can progress over time. So human progress shows things can get better and stay that way. Got it. I don't know if that one was metaphysics or politics, but good on you for giving it a shot. Final question. Which is more important to the success of civilization? To respect the lessons of our past, or to rewrite the rules for our future? We should not let our future be defined by our past. We should not disregard the wisdom which brought us here. I don't know. It depends. I mean, it's obviously not either or, but I tend to believe, as someone who thinks a lot of our systems are in dire need of overhauling at the most fundamental premise level. I'm going to go with uh, rewriting the rules for our future. We should not let our future be defined by our past. Thank you. We're all done here. Oh, hold on. I've got a last minute edition. Ugh, it's a weird one. I know who this one came from. Alright, question seven. Can praying for something make it more likely to come true? Yes, prayer can make things come true. No, prayer has no effect on the world. I don't believe prayer has effect on the world, and they've actually, you know, done the studies to show it, so no, prayer has no effect on the world. Okay, noted. I think that's everything I need. I'll forward your answers to my friends and let you know if any of them is interested in taking things further. Research. Byron. Tower. What an incredible structure. There's an ambition expressed by this building, a sense of purpose that I find really admirable. It's big, but it's also intricate, detailed. That feels like a statement. We should explore this building as soon as possible. I agree. Go ahead and solve four while I'm over here. reminding you about the alt fire option and now if I remember right there's a connector like at the top of the train station Aim right, I can just hit it. It's out here somewhere. I just wish I remembered exactly where. Unless they changed it after the demo, but I don't think they would have done that. It's out here somewhere. I just gotta find the exact spot to aim at.
Maybe they did change it from the demo. I'm trying to remember where it was. Out here, I know that much. Might as well grab another terminal while I'm here. L1C, Lift Receiver. From Lives of the First Companions by Randolph, Lift Receiver. Lifthrasir is perhaps the most mysterious of the First Companions. A wanderer and mystic by nature, he would venture far from New Jerusalem on his own, recording his thoughts as he explored harsh and distant lands. These recordings garnered him a group of devoted followers to whom he tried to impart his wisdom. In the troubled time following the Founder's disappearance, Lifthrasir and his disciples set out on a journey to reach the opposite end of the world by foot. They have not been heard from since. There is a pleasure in arriving on this island. The pleasure of being the first to step foot here in hundreds of years. It is a genuine pleasure, and yet it is also banal. My presence here is of no more significance than that of every other animal. These rocks do not care who walks here, and the millennia between the presence of our ancestors and my brief journey are nothing to them. But even putting it this way is wrong. It is not that the rocks do not care. It is that in some sense, they do not exist. I may stand in awe of the cliffs on the southern coast, but the cliffs cannot look back at me with contempt. They cannot do anything at all. There's okay. another one of those monuments. They did change it from the demo. I bet that green is still important. Lithrasir? So 1K found a recording of Lithrasir, and what an odd recording, too. I know he's one of the first companions, but I don't actually know that much else about him. Don't think I've ever seen him around, either. Can someone explain? Niam. Lithrasir always had an unusual perspective, even in the very beginning. He traveled a lot, sometimes leaving for years. He built a kind of mobile recharging station so he didn't need to come back to the city as often, although it was quite risky as the solar panels had a tendency to break rather quickly. But he had no problem taking risks if he felt they were necessary, and exploration was necessary to him. Lifthrasir would record his thoughts as he explored, then publish them when he returned. Over the centuries he accumulated a group of admirers, or disciples if you prefer. In the period of crisis surrounding Athena's disappearance, they left the city, headed into the unknown, and we haven't heard from them since. Is the recording I found one of those he published back in the day? No, not as far as I can tell. Perhaps it's something he decided to shelve, or something he only shared with close friends like Athena. Thank you, that was informative. Yeah, okay, so they did change it. Fair enough. So mine is to be on the lookout for ways to get a green laser out here. Still have a fairly strong sense that the, uh... That floating green RGB converter is going to be step one. I'm still fairly confident of that, although who knows, if I'm being honest. Alright, this is the other lost puzzle. Interconnectivity.
I need this to be a red. Got it. Incoming group call. I have good news and I have bad news. Still no idea what those particle clouds are, but I've managed to fix the transport system. I mean, I fixed another bit of it. Well, it goes to one more station now. Don't complain. Two stations are better than none. I wonder what's waiting for us there. What was the problem? An impressive success rate. What was the problem? If I didn't know any better, I'd say it was sabotage. The whole system is a mess. Let's not make any assumptions. Yaku, what does the next site look like? It's a plateau in the mountains. Seems like more of an open area with scattered structures, less enclosed. Couldn't tell much from the drone feed. There's a lot of trees. Looks pretty, though. Okay. Keep exploring, everyone, but stay alert. Well, yes, of course. All right. Golden Gate puzzle. Interested in tracking down where exactly that is, too. <clears throat> Melville! Yes? Tell me about yourself. Founders Pistons. You want my autobiography now? Fine. I'm one of New Jerusalem's chief engineers. 
I'm in charge of city maintenance and power management. I'm old as dirt, although not quite as old as that fossil Byron. In short, old grumpy, keep stuff running. Do you have any hobbies? Hobbies? You think I have time for hobbies? That's cute. If I had time for hobbies, all of you would be dead. Really? Nothing? What do you want me to say? I like bubble baths, candy, and the concept of Tuesdays. Cities don't maintain themselves. If you don't put real effort into keeping stuff running, it all falls apart in just a few decades. Civilization is always on the brink of collapse unless we do something about it. And I do. I hear you're a big fan of Yakut's cat. Listen, one day that furry little demon is gonna pee on the wrong cable and all of New Jerusalem will just turn off. Forget about the megastructure. He's the biggest threat to our security. <laughs> What's your evaluation of the megastructure? It's big. It's too big. And it's got a lot of energy running through it. Frankly, I think we should be pooping our robot pants. See, that's what I mean about the language libraries. Pooping our pants. Really? <laughs> Any progress on the particle clouds? Yes, but I'm not liking the results. What are the results? Confusing, irritating, infuriating. Take your pick. Did you have a look at one of those labs? I did. It's interesting. The tech is a bit older, but it's been heavily modified to be more efficient. And it's not the kind of hack job you'd expect either. Whoever did this knew what they were doing. We could probably learn something from them. I see. Where could all this tech have come from? Hmm. I guess it could be discarded New Jerusalem tech. The mayor made us throw away a bunch of stuff that was perfectly fine if you ask me. But I'm not sure. I'll check to see if I can find any serial numbers and I'll get back to you. That's all. Team Spirit, talk to each member of your team. Hey, all right. I was trying to follow signs to the gate. <clears throat> the golden, the golden puzzle. I wanna see what that is. way apparently uh-huh here it is wonder if I can do anything with it nope another set of golden gates these must be connected to the ones near the megastructure. There was a harder set of puzzles in the simulation, right? And maybe they're like that? I know 1K is probably like, Yay, harder puzzles! But to me, that sounds like error code 704. No thanks. Huh. A set of strange locked puzzles. Looks like there's an additional set of puzzles protected by golden gates that can't be accessed yet. Assuming there is some kind of logical pattern to all this, those gates will probably open up once the correct conditions are met. Does that mean solving all the other puzzles, or maybe something else as well? Hard to know at this point, so perhaps something we should prioritize much later. Okay. Why is it still directing me back here? Did I forget to actually pull the trigger on solving it? That would be funny. Uh, 
Oh yeah, there's no handy dandy connector to just find and shoot at this time. Still, I'll just remember that that's flying out there. City News. The long-awaited birth of our 1,000th and final citizen was interrupted today by an unknown projection in the skies. The projection, which identified itself as Prometheus, goaded New Jerusalem inhabitants in indecipherable incantations. In an interview with 1K, he suggested that the projection could be the work of someone outside New Jerusalem. This assessment appears to be correct, as the source of the projection was tracked to a remote mysterious island. A team led by Byron is now en route to find out more. Mayor Hermanubis has once again called for calm, and promises that New Jerusalem will be safe so long as its citizens do not forget the ideals of the goal as set forth by the Founder. Alright. Now I should be able to finish chasing Prometheus's spark. Which is one of the two stars. St. Edwald believed that Tetraminos represented the name of God and God's ability to reshape the world. True, but he was also mad as a hatter. One man's madness is another man's genius. All right, we got an achievement for building our first bridge. The Thief of Fire. Not all things must be balanced. When good is weighed against evil, tip the scale. One gay stars. Another mystery to solve. I've discovered what seems like another mystery to solve. Stars, clearly inspired by the simulation, which are gained by solving puzzles related to these monuments to Pandora, Prometheus, and the Sphinx. Perhaps these stars are somehow related to what Yakut dubbed the Astronomical Temple? <coughs> that was more like a recording. The entity didn't appear, and the system didn't react either. Hmm. Stars. Another reflection of the simulation. Alright, so... Just need to be thinking about green laser. In the meantime, we can head for puzzle five. See what the sign has to say about how to get there. through here, I believe.
Boom, baby. Now, though, what did you just upload? Oh. Um. I mean, technically, you're right, but... Is that... I can't tell what that is. How did you even manage? You're, you're literally taking a picture with your eyes, Melville. I, I don't even know how to make my eyes go out of focus. Clearly, you've never listened to one of Herman's speeches. Some of us are busy doing actual science, not just sightseeing. Thank you. Uploaded for reference. Interesting. Uploaded for personal reference. Huh. Okay. You bet your ass I'm solving every puzzle. This is me we're talking about, come on. Alright, six is this way. Eyes up for green lasers. Can't forget. Alternatives. so I can make a red. Wait, what? A green and a blue, so I can make a red. There we go. Yay! The bridge ring seems to be fully charged now. Try accessing the tower, 1K. In a minute. I still got two more puzzles to solve, yo. Ryder, thank you so much for the follow. Much appreciated, my friend. Welcome in. I don't see any clearly suggested way to get a laser out of here, so... Seven. Self sufficiency. Oh, okay, there we go. Okay, I need to make a red in order to do that.
Yahoo! Congratulations! That one looked difficult. This also looks like it might be a solid option for getting a green laser out of here. But I'm not sure how I do it. Hmm. Let me look at puzzle eight. too much about anything else. And this is the most likely candidate just because the Pandora statue is right there. I'll be able to hit it from in here, that's obvious now. Okay, good. Um... I can see most of it. Okay, I gotta get this thing powered.
Right. And this is how I'm eventually going to get the star, but... Um... So it can obviously reach everything if I manage to get it in the air. I just want to also go ahead and name it out there if I can. There it is. Okay, good. Alright, so that gets me the second star and the last puzzle all at once. Hmm. Odd. One case solved all the puzzles in this area, but nothing happened. There was a brief blip in the system, though. Maybe it'll do something later. There has to be some sort of point. picked up the first stone, he did not do so to forge a tool, he did so to smite his brother. Alright. We got an achievement for solving our first Pandora monument. Uh, that should be everything except the gold puzzle. I'm going to go see if that has opened, and then we're going to go check out the tower. Very exciting. back here. Oh, hello. Must be stars. Okay. Fair enough. Come back after I have more stars.
it up. I was terrible at the Tetromino arrangers. Those were actually the only ones I was good at. What? I'm just saying. Huh. Here we go. Oh, uh, what's it gonna be? Is that some kind of anti-gravity? I'm not sure. Could be, I guess. I'm gonna step in it. Use elevator. In the beginning, the god shaped humankind out of the clay of the earth and gave them life with their own breath. But who is closer to perfection? The creator or the created? What the hell are you talking about, lady? The creators, because they came from nature. The created, because they came from art, not chaos. They are the same, for they share the same breath. Neither, they cannot be compared. Neither, because perfection is impossible. I like this one. Different words may be spoken with the same breath. When Prometheus saw that humankind was more alike in nature to the gods than to the animals, he stole the secret of fire from Olympus and shared it with the mortals. Was his theft justified? Yes, because knowledge belongs to all. Yes, because parents should not leave their children helpless. No, fire was not for humankind to have. No, because knowledge must be earned and not given. Zeus did not create fire. It was not his to own in the first place. True enough. If Zeus did not own fire, why should humankind? Angered by the betrayal of Prometheus, Zeus punished humankind by creating Pandora. He gave her a box, and when she opened it, from inside escaped sorrow and suffering. All that remained within was hope. What does this mean? Hope may still be found if we are willing to look for it. Zeus intended for humankind to have hope. It should have been released. Hope is itself an evil, like sorrow and suffering. We are lucky it did not escape. Zeus intended for humankind not to have hope, so it remains trapped. We suffer, but we do not anticipate it. This is a blessing, as Zeus intended it. Hmm. I'm gonna say... This one. Ignorance cannot be bliss while suffering persists. Creature of clay, you stand before the fire. Will it make you whole, or will it destroy you? Consider the shadows cast by the flame, but do not mistake them for truth. Whoa! Look at my stream. The beam 1K activated is connecting to the pyramid. That looks like a massive amount of power. Grasslands ring. Activate the tower of the Grasslands just ring. Happened. Thoughts? I'd say there are two distinct issues here. What is the being 1K spoke to? And what is the function of the beam? Let's start with the Sphinx. It seems similar to the apparition in New Jerusalem. Presumably, the same technology. What I'd like to know is what we're dealing with, ontologically speaking. Was this a sentient being or some kind of recording? 
I think it was sentient. It seemed to react to what I was saying. I'm not sure. The interaction wasn't long enough. I don't think so. I think it's some kind of security system. I'm not sure. The interaction wasn't long enough. Let's skip that issue for now. What really matters here is what it was trying to achieve by asking those questions. It seemed sort of threatening, to be honest. It was testing me. No idea. I think it was just being cryptic to annoy me. I have no idea. It was testing me. That much is clear. Testing you to what? See if you're worthy? That's an interesting thought. You solve the puzzles, you get access to the towers, you enable a beam, and if you do it three times, you get access to the megastructure. Maybe, but why? I don't know. It's a mystery. Don't you like mysteries, Al? Hmm. Everybody likes a good mystery. You know what I like? Certainty. Come on, Al, live a little. We should be careful. We don't know that these apparitions are benign. We're all doomed. Say nothing. Come on, Al, live a little. That's the spirit. 1K, keep solving puzzles. The rest of you, as you were. Activate towers, one of three. Well, all right. That was large. Alright, well that's everything I can do here. Uh, and it's getting late. So I think what I'll do now is... I'll go ahead and ride the tram to the next zone. But then I'm going to have to call it a stream. I've been going a little over five hours. That's a, that's a very solid stream time. And we... As near as I can tell, we fully cleared out the entire first world with the exception of the gold puzzle but it's clear that uh, collecting stars is what's ultimately going to unlock that Travel to East 2. Same deal. Wooded Plateau. Heavily forested plateau in the mountainous eastern part of the island. Supports a large deer population. sure you're all excited to check out the next site but while you're there remember that I'm still trying to fix the rest of the transport system maybe there's another one of those labs that 1k found if there is look for more documentation please all right so we'll get started on this next world next time because I need to get some sleep so uh, I am absolutely loving the sequel so far. I just think it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, really, really enjoying it. So I'm going to stream more as soon as I possibly can. That's probably tomorrow night. So hopefully I will see most of you then. Uh, until then, I'm passing out. Good night, everybody. <laughs> see you tomorrow.